All right, guys. Well, welcome. Um, absolutely thrilled to have you. See some new faces and see some old ones. Uh, my name is Patrick. I run the marketing department here at Art Storefronts, and we also have our CEO Nick, who's on here as well. Um, we want to we want to value and be respectful of your time, so we love getting things started right away. So, why people are joining? Um, just going to give you a quick sort of uh, heads up about what we're going to do today. So we're gonna we're gonna start off, and we're gonna put you kind of through like a little bit of a a truncated demo of the software and the marketing product. Uh, once that's done, uh, I'm gonna go on a little rant for you about sort of um, what we do as a business. Yes, software, yes, marketing, but the overall big picture, solving the starving artist problem, uh, uh, getting you on the path to a six figure a year plus business. I'll explain some of that. And then my favorite part, the best part, is gonna be your questions and answers. And literally getting into what you're stuck in, stuck on, where your business is, uh, what are the potential issues, uh, uh, and, and there'll be a ton of opportunities to get into your, your Q&A. We can do that live via video. If you're more comfortable staying off video, I totally get that. I hate video. Uh, you can use the chat. So both of those are an option. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started, and then we'll be back for the Q&A on the other side. everybody, welcome to today's session. My name's Taylor, I'm on the marketing team at Art Storefronts. One of the people putting together our many resources and consulting and mentoring our members on a regular basis in workshops like these. Today's session is for non-members, so this is a free, wide open session, and how it's a little bit different than what you get as a member. Our member workshops, which we hold five times a week at this point on various topics, are largely tactical, right? So it's giving uh, our members ongoing advice, tweaks to their strategy, checking in with them, seeing how far they've gotten since we last spoke, and uh, making sure their business is always growing. By contrast, today will be largely about what we call unclogging the drain. Before you're even ready for tactical or strategic advice, you need to get the big thing out of the way. And we found through these non-member workshops that uh, most artists and photographers out there have something. They have a big thing in their way. It can be a mindset problem, some kind of self-limiting belief that if you just simply do away with it, the path becomes clear. Or it could be something more practical, like uh, not, not doing something that you really need to be doing. Whatever it is, we're going to find out about it today and fix it for you. Before we get into all that good stuff, I have two segments for you up top here, opening remarks. The first one, stuff you need to know about this workshop, how it works. The second, a little bit of an overview on art storefronts, uh, just to get some context, set the stage, you know, who we are and what we do. First up, the need to know information about today's workshop. To get in line to chat with us, right? To, to get unmuted and start to uh, get some help, you need to use the raise hand button in Zoom. So at the bottom of your Zoom window, you'll see the participants button. You're gonna hit that, and that'll open this on the right hand side, where you'll find the blue raise hand button. You hit that, and that will do it, raise hand. You'll see up here, your name will show the, the blue raise hand button. That's the system we use. We go top to bottom, uh, unmuting everyone that has their hand raised and uh, helping them out. So if you have a question up front, you know you wanna talk to us, you can do that right now and get early in line so you'll be one of the first people to get some help today. If something comes up later and you, you don't have a question yet but something comes to mind, you can always do it later in the session too. The second thing you need to know is that we have a page that we call the show notes and that's where we aggregate all of the links to resources that come up today. So if uh, one of us says we have a really good video about that, or we say we actually have a podcast episode that would help you out, you don't need to be hunting around for that in the moment. We're doing that for you. We're collecting it all. Here's what the page looks like. We're going to send this to you after today's session ends. We're going to email it to you. So you'll find the replay at the top. Right? So if you have to leave early or you arrived late, uh, or even if you missed it altogether, uh, you can always catch up with the replay here. And then this is the show notes section I was talking about. All the links will be there, everything that came up. So you'll have that. Don't worry about looking anything up. In the moment, we're taking care of it. Uh, I should also mention on this page while you're here, there are a couple of request a demo buttons. Those are your go-to spots for either signing up if you just want to get going, or 
reaching out to us, having a more in-depth chat about our features and our pricing and stuff like that. That's how you start those conversations. If you just wanna do your research and uh, get to know us, see if there's a good fit, you hit the request the demo button, you fill out the form and we'll get in touch. That's how you do that. Okay, second segment today, uh, what even is Art Storefronts, okay? So here is the very quick overview. And like I said, the demo is where they go in depth. They'll do an hour for you. They'll answer as many questions as you have. But today, I don't know how many people here already know everything about us, nothing about us. So I'll just go right down the middle and do a very quick overview. Um, there are two halves to art storefronts. There is the website software, right? So that is the art selling website. And then there's the marketing program, and that is really the fuel for that website engine. The, the website could be fantastic. We believe it's the best website software for artists ever designed. We really believe that, and I'll show you why in a moment. However, all of the power of that website is meaningless if there's no one on it. So the marketing program is what completes the whole membership. Uh, I'll show you both halves now, starting with the website. There are hundreds of features, hundreds of features. It is very difficult to give you a full overview of everything that's going on with this software. So I think I will just show you uh, what's really most important, right? The product page. At the end of the day, everything on your website is designed around getting people here to the product page where then they can check out and buy your artwork. So what is the big deal with these product pages? Um, to explain that, let's just clarify that I'm showing you an artwork product page today. That's the important one. We also have what we call standard product pages, and that's where you can sell anything. If you have ceramics, jewelry, uh, clothing, you can sell all of those product types on art storefronts. It does not need to be solely wall art. But I wanna show you the wall art product page because there's an important thing to uh, get straight here. These pages are set up specifically to sell wall art. That's in contrast to a website provider like Squarespace that has to have their product pages work for all product types, whether you're selling artwork or toilet paper or electric scooters, right? It works for everything, which creates a master of none situation when it comes to their features. They have not considered artwork in particular, so they have not addressed the problems, the challenges with selling artwork online like we have. The big deal with selling artwork online is that there is a lot of friction. It is not a product like toilet paper or electric scooters where you want what it does and you find the one that you like and you buy it. Uh, it's a little more complicated than that. Buying art is an emotional journey. You fall in love with the work. You get to know the artist through their emails and their social media posts. You save up for it. Uh, eventually you get the wall space open, but even then you have questions like how, which piece should I select and how is it gonna look with my uh, wall paint color? How's it gonna work? with the other uh, pieces of artwork in my collection? Will my spouse like it? How do I show it to them in the best way? Um, what are the media types available? I've never heard of this word acrylic. Is that worth looking into? Uh, what size is gonna work for my space? I don't want it to look too small or of course too big. Uh, all of these questions are where you lose sales. People have those questions, your website does not answer them and they never get it answered, they leave. Uh, you cannot rely on people reaching out to you actively to ask these questions, right? Your website needs to passively answer them for you all the time. Whenever that question comes up, whichever one it is, your website comes in and says, oh, here you go, got the help for you right here, problem solved, keep going, keep making the purchase, right? That is what maximizes art sales. Let's start by just looking at the layout of the page. Image on the left, buying options on the right. Not below, not somewhere down the page you need to scroll to find. Everything is uh, visible on one screen and it's all expanded. There's not drop downs. Everything is image based. This is like the express lane to checking out artwork online. Beyond that, you can offer every version of an image side by side. The open edition prints are right here. With one click, you can start shopping the limited edition prints, signed and numbered, highest quality, that sort of thing. With another click, you're over to the original version of that image. If the original is available, uh, you could step up and buy it right here. Finally, the multi-panel. This is where you break up a single image into three prints, right? So it's a huge upsell. You turn one print sale up that one. If you don't offer one of these media types, like you're a photographer, so you don't have originals, uh, you wouldn't have this tab on your website. This is just showing all the possible options, but you'll set it up to whatever you actually offer. So if you don't have limited editions, it's gone. It's not on your actual site. Uh, it adapts to what you actually sell. Within these, let's look at the open edition prints. Now, the big challenge there is explaining the media types. 
the average art consumer does not know terms like uh, canvas gallery wrap, G-clay print, uh, metal, acrylic. They don't know what these look like. They don't know what they are. So it becomes difficult to make a smart decision um, until they do. So the website's job is to educate them very quickly and visually. So here's how we've done that. When you click on one of the media types, the uh, preview over on the left-hand side uh, adapts in a subtle way. So this adds a little bit of virtual depth to this image because we selected the canvas option. That clues people in, oh, this is that traditional thick gallery look. Beyond that, maybe they don't know what metal is. Uh, you can hover on these tool tips here, the little question marks and then you can launch a video. These are custom videos we've produced just for our members that show every angle of these media types and summarize the benefits. They're about 15 seconds long and they instantly create that connection of, oh, that is what I want. Very powerful. Um, beyond those buying tools, you have the visualization tools. This is for questions like, uh, I love the piece, I know I want it on metal, I'm just not sure if it's really gonna look good in my space or uh, how large I should buy. That's where the visualization tools come in. Wall preview is the, uh, the starter there. Uh, you can select a room type and you can get going very quickly, a good representation of uh, what size you need. Right, so let's step it up, the 30, that looks good, the 32 looks even better, right? You're stepping it in. We've got wall color here. These aren't random, these are the top selling uh, paint colors from last year from Benjamin Moore, Sherwin-Williams. So there's a high likelihood your buyers will actually find their real wall color right in here. Very simple, very fast. Uh, so this helps clear up some of those questions, but we take it to the next level with live room preview. You can see the button here and also on the product page right here, live preview. AR. This is an augmented reality tool that allows people to use their mobile or tablet device to uh, visualize the artwork on their actual wall, not a virtual space, not a hypothetical wall, their actual wall space. So you can see in this video here, it projects it onto their wall. They can start to select the sizing and see how everything looks. They can move it around the wall space. And now there is no translation problem, right? It is not close to their wall color or whatever. It is their real actual space. The most powerful part of this feature, because other websites have this type of functionality via an app. Ours works in the web browser. There is no downloading and installing an app. They're right in the checkout process. They pop open this tool. It works on their phone. They close the tool once they're happy and they continue checking out. That is the game changing part of it. So overall, I think that does a good job of summarizing uh, a few of the features of the product page here, but that is your, your drop in the bucket overview. It goes on and on. Art Buyer AI recognizes and informs you when a likely collector has visited your site. Uh, we have tools that allow you to fire off very quick emails to welcome personally new subscribers, to uh, reach out when someone has added something to their cart but not checked out, right? Give you a shot to close that sale. The features really go on and on, QR codes, selling sheets. Um, I couldn't possibly summarize it today. Request a demo if you wanna see a little bit more. Um, but that is the engine. The, the Ferrari in your driveway, let's talk about the fuel that goes in it, the marketing program. Uh, of course, when it comes to artists, you guys do not want to be marketing. I understand that completely. You want to be creating the work and selling it. That's it. But the in-between step is very necessary and it is marketing. So let's talk about how we make that process as painless as possible while still getting you uh, doing the work that you must do to grow a small business. The centerpiece to our marketing program, where it all comes back to, is the art marketing calendar. That is the core piece. Everything else just supports this. The marketing calendar is a daily plan that tells you exactly what to do every single day of the year. It provides you with all the email language you'll need to pull off sales, a Black Friday sale, something like that. And it gives you the advice that you need to turn your casual followers into leads, that's people on your email list, your leads into first time buyers and your buyers into lifelong repeat collectors. We walk you through it on a daily basis. It is not overwhelming. It is not a knowledge base where you need to watch 55 videos and then just implement what they said. All you need to do is look at today. Uh, we're on Wednesday. What do they say to do? I have three tasks to complete. It should take me about 30 minutes. Let's do it. Three tasks, one, two, three, knocked it out. You have done what you need to do for your business today. It's that simple. 
let's look at what this thing is. So uh, up top, attention newbies. This is a section with four steps we want our new members to complete before they get down to the full calendar. Uh, some highlights here, we have a workshop every Wednesday where our marketing team will look at your new Art Storefronts website, go through the major pages, and make sure that it's set up according to best practices from a marketing point of view, right? So before you even launch, you make sure you're gonna be closing every possible sale. Uh, we also have a campaign, a 14-day campaign that we want all new members to execute. It's, it's just like the calendar. It tells you what to do day by day. Post this message on Facebook and post this message on Instagram and send this email. Very simple to follow. And that uh, campaign is themed around celebrating your new website in a way that will generate you some leads and maybe some sales to right up top. So we ask everyone to do that before getting into the calendar with everyone else. Below the newbie section, we have the live workshop schedule that has uh, your look at what's coming up this week, when you can join us in Zoom in our members only workshops. We have some announcements that go here. We have a strategic overview, step three. This section is written by our CEO and our director of marketing. And in it, they give you their advice, what they would do if they were running your business this month, where your head should be at, right? So the, the calendar below is your daily bit by bit look. This section is the high-level overview, what you should be thinking about your major goals for the month. And then you have the calendar itself. You can see it's day by day. Um, we have a bit of hierarchy here where we put the most important tasks in red and everything else in black. Nothing goes on here. That's not important to do, right? So the black tasks are not unimportant. It's just that if you have very limited time, uh, you have family obligations, a part or full-time job, and you can't get to the entire calendar, no problem. Uh, do the red stuff first, and then if you have extra time, do the black tasks. Uh, most people have no problem completing 75% uh, or more of the calendar, though. It's not a huge obligation because we do so much of the work up front for you in terms of writing the subject lines you should be sending and giving you lots of examples whenever anything uh, needs to be created. Uh, it's day by day. You've got the major task of the day, and then you've got go to tasks, a button that jumps you down the page to the full explanation of the day. It'll give you an objective for the day and then break down uh, what you need to be doing into tasks. One, two, three, do these things. Very easy to follow. Um, everything else, like I said, supports this system. So our workshops in general are supporting our members as they're following this calendar. Uh, you check in with us, you say, I did the Saturday Sunday task and I got these results. What can I do to boost them even further? Or uh, I see next week I need to be doing this, but I don't have my head around it fully yet. Can you uh, talk to me a little bit more about it? All that sort of stuff. We make sure our members are moving together through the calendar all at the same time when we do something new, right? So we've recently started doing these live art shows. We have a playbook on how to execute a live art show from home and our members are having some huge successes with this, selling dozens of pieces from home on Instagram or Facebook Live. Um, that is an example of something where after everyone does this together, we have hundreds, maybe even a thousand people running these live shows simultaneously. Then the following week, we have uh, six or seven or eight of the people that had the most success with that strategy come on a live workshop for our members and just talk through what they did. We hear out, how did they address it specifically? Was there anything that was a little different than anyone else? How did they see that success? Um, that way all of the members can hear what's working from the other members, and then we go ahead and update all of our playbooks with the new learnings. So there is nothing in this program that is static, that is a dead uh, blog post style article from six years ago that may or may not be relevant today. We are updating these things on a weekly basis, checking in with our members, uh, if enough people report that this part didn't work for them, it didn't really seem to do anything, it gets pulled out, right? We are live adjusting all of our resources so that when you join in, you get the learnings of the past several years just baked into everything. So I've talked a lot about how our members interact with us, get mentorship and consulting from us via the workshops, but we also have a venue for them to get help from each other when they need to talk shop or just get input from a whole bunch of artists really quick on a topic like, you know, how do you address shipping? How do you go about uh, tax, some kind of tax situation? All that sort of stuff. The Small Wins Facebook group is the place for that. It's private just for our members, and that is where they go to ask for help, share their, their small wins, as we call it, you know, all the little successes that stack up into a successful business. Uh, does anyone know how to patent or copyright a design? Get some help from our members on that. 
So this is the place to go uh, when you need to uh, quickly poll a huge group of people uh, that, that have gotten further than you, right? That already have gotten where you wanna go uh, and have the learnings, the quick learnings that they can summarize for you. Between all of these resources that all fall back on the calendar, you have a marketing system that keeps you in line, that keeps you moving, that does not simply present you with 1,000 hours of content and asks you to explore it at your own pace, figure out for yourself which things you should be following and which things you should ignore. Uh, uh -uh. This is about the calendar. It's about uh, cutting out all the time you waste thinking about what you should and shouldn't be doing. That is the time saver uh, here, the big game changer. You no longer need to think about all the possible things. We've already done that. We've highlighted what you should be doing, the best return on your time. All right, that is my uh, rant. I was, I was gonna say short rant, I know it wasn't short, but it's very difficult to compress everything we have going on into uh, a format like this. So thanks for listening. Uh, again, the website is your engine. The marketing program is the fuel for that engine. Uh, so with that said, let's get into the consulting. Uh, I think we're all on the same page now, so let's do that drain unclogging I talked about in the beginning. Uh, I'll turn it over to our hosts. All right, guys. Um, thank you, Taylor. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Nick Friend. I'm CEO and owner of Art Storefronts. Um, glad you guys are all here today. What I'm going to do, though, here to start is I want to go over um, what, what we call the five pillars of building a successful art business, all right? And, I, and to give you a little bit of background, we have spent many, many years and much thought to come up with these, okay? And uh, um, my, my experience in this industry goes back to, uh, it goes back about 20 years. In 2003, I started a company called Breathing Color. Some of you may know about it. Um, it's one of the biggest manufacturers of canvas, fine art paper, photography paper, um, metal, all sorts of products for high quality printing. And so I have been working with, you know, artists and photographers, as well as the biggest fine art printing companies and photo labs in the country for the last 20 years. Um, and, you know, through all of that, we've gotten a ton of experience and uh, obviously for the last seven years at Art Storefronts, working directly with 4,000 individual artists and photographers directly consulting for their businesses, right? On the ground floor, doing things, you know, testing things and learning what, what, what is actually working and what is not, what's a waste of time, you know, what should you be doing? What should you not? And obviously turning that into a product. That's what Art Storefronts is, right? We just, we're reverse engineering success where it's happening, right? And turning that into the best website software that you can use to sell art, right? With all the features you need, as well as the step-by-step -step plans and playbooks, you know, completely based off what is actually really working right now. Not like what worked a year ago, five years ago, what's working right now for artists and photographers, you know, um, and we're obviously doing this ourselves along with our customers. It's not just some like high level esoteric thing. It's, you know, our fingernails are dirty actually doing it. And so in learning, you know, what's created the most successful artists. And by that we would say people that are selling a hundred K a hundred thousand dollars or more a year, right? There are some, you know, very interesting characteristics. And uh, most people don't have them straight up. They don't have them. They're, they're off base in, in a bunch of different ways. And it's not necessarily like a personal thing. It's like, like a talent thing or anything like that. It's actually more strategic and mental than anything else. And so with these workshops that we're doing here, one of the things that like, you know, we want you guys to take away that I want you guys to take away and get some value from is getting your business model and your strategy right up front, okay? Because there are some things that I'm gonna go over here in these five pillars. In fact, it's really all of them, but there's a few of them that, that like, if you've been getting these wrong for years, you know, or if you get these wrong, like you're already done. Literally, you're already, you're already done. You might as well just stop. And this is what, you know, cause has, this is what has resulted in the starving artist problem for, you know, it's a thousand year old problem, which is an unbelievable thing to say, right? It's like multiple millennia. Um, but, but most artists and photographers um, have been going down the wrong path, the wrong strategy, the wrong business model. And they just didn't even know it. And so they're on this hamster wheel 
where like they get into a couple of galleries or they do a couple things, you know, maybe they sell at some art shows, but they never really like get to that point of getting consistent income, you know, or getting a breather at all, you know, um, you know, getting to an outcome that they want someday. And it's because, you know, you got to get these things right. So these are the five pillars. And uh, I, uh, I hope you guys really listen up and, you know, maybe write them down um, because I think they're going to really help you and, and you can reflect on them after the session. And then after I go over these five pillars, I'm going to go obviously through your hands and go through all of your questions. So um, feel free to raise your hands, you know, digitally as Taylor just showed you. The way to do that, I'll just repeat again, as you just hover, hover your mouse over, the, over Zoom and you'll see on the bottom bar, it has a participants button. Click that. And then on your right hand side, um, there'll be like the list of names of people. And then there's a button there that says raise hand. Don Fast, if I'm pronouncing that right, Fast or Fast has already raised his hand. Jeffrey Packer just did, or he just took his down. Um, but uh, there it is again. So you guys go ahead and raise your hands and I'm just gonna go you know, in order. Um, if you don't wanna you know, talk to me verbally or on video, feel free to ask a question in the chat window. And um, one of my team members that's on this uh, session as well will try to answer it. And I'll, I'll, answer, I'll answer some of them too um, if, they, if they need, if they're like kind of an uncommon response. But let's get your businesses unstuck. That's the goal today, right? That's why this is a workshop. What is your number one problem? Think about what that is and let's, let's get you unstuck today. All right, back to the five pillars. So pillar number one, unclog the drain. Taylor just talked about it. This is a really big deal. It's, there's a reason why it's pillar number one. And it's because, you know, it's about getting out of your own way. It's about, you know, understanding and analyzing the, the things you're stuck on that are not moving your business forward. We call them low ROI activities, ROI, return on investment, right? That's a common term in the investment world. But in our case, we're talking about your time, okay? You only have so many hours that you can spend on your business, on marketing. And I know you guys don't love spending your time doing admin and marketing. So you want to make sure that you're spending your time on the highest ROI activities, right? That's where you're going to get like the most bang for your time, so to speak, um, on getting your, you know, more eyeballs in front of your art, okay? And so people commonly are spending their time on tinkering around with their website, you know, spending an un unreal amount of time on things like print fulfillment, um, overanalyzing like what their pricing should be, uh, overanalyzing like what niches they should be in or not be in. And all of these things, there's so many of them, they clog the drain, you know? And what we always say at Art Storefronts is we could give you the best art marketing plan in the world and the best, you know, website technology, we, you know, and we believe we have that. We believe we have both of these things. And it literally will not matter. There's no point in signing up for art storefronts unless your drain is unclogged because that thing is going to stop you. It's a mental hurdle. You know, it's going to stop you and it's going to prevent you from being successful. So got to unclog the drain. That's probably the number one thing we're going to be doing today. All right. That's pillar number one. Pillar number two, understanding the business model, having the right business model. Okay. This to me, you will, you will hear me. The more you guys like, see any of my sessions, or if you end up becoming an Art Storefronts member, you'll see me say this a lot, but this one is the big, big cause of the starving artist problem, all right? And the, the, the business model choices that you have basically go in two ways. You can either go direct or you go indirect, all right? Those are both the, the direct business model, the indirect business model. Let me explain. The indirect business model is when you sell through a third party who ultimately sells to your customer, the art buyer, all right? For examples of third parties, art galleries, art publishers, art dealers, right? They're selling to your customer. They're the intermediary, okay, between you and your customer. We've also learned recently as a result of the pandemic that art shows actually have their own like third party, you know, indirect element to them. Even though you're selling directly to your customer at the event, Look what's happened. There's no art shows. The art shows depend on the city, the organizers, the organizers not only putting on the event, but bringing people there that are actually qualified, you know, and that whole world, the whole rug's been pulled out from underneath you, right? And so what's really interesting about the indirect business model is that 
any experienced business owner or entrepreneur in any industry will tell you, all right, that the indirect business model is extremely flawed and you can never rely on it, okay? It always needs to be the gravy of your revenue that you earn, the gravy, right? So what that means is there's nothing wrong with selling into galleries if they're gonna sell for you. Obviously, we're in a weird time right now, so I'm speaking generally. There's nothing wrong with any of the indirect methods of selling, but you need to un mentally understand that you will never build a consistent business ever, ever off of indirect selling channels. They are, you enjoy them while you have them, but they will come and go, right? So you can see this is a major problem because most artists and photographers, in fact, like almost everyone has built their business off that, you know, and, uh, and has struggled for years as a result, right? It's really hard to get out of that hamster wheel. And then they wonder like, why can't I ever earn consistent income? Let's compare that to the direct, right? Indirect, direct. Direct is what every entrepreneur or, or experienced business owner knows is exactly where you need to be spending like 95% of your time when you're doing marketing or you're working on your business, right? Direct means you are selling directly to your buyers, no intermediaries. You make the most money from your work. You own everything. You control your destiny entirely, okay? That is the key. That is the key. That is like, please guys, take that away with you today. If there's one thing you take away, right? I gotta go direct, you know? I've gotta sell direct to my customers. That's how you build consistent income, right? Because you're gonna own all of your leads, your whole email list, every customer name, every relationship, you know, the money's gonna go directly to, into your account. You're gonna make the most money from your work. Guess what? When a pandemic happens, like we're in right now, guess who is killing it right now in the art market? Guess who's making record sales for the last four months? The artists and the photographers who built a direct business model, okay? Many of them are on our platform. That's what we specialize in is helping people build a direct business. It's a, it's a major passion of mine because I've been an entrepreneur for 20 years and I've, I've learned these things the hard way, right? Like I have a lot of friends that are entrepreneurs and business owners. You will learn it the hard way until, you know, but you don't have to, right? That's why I'm telling you. So make sure you guys, you know, are running a direct business and you're spending 95% of your time on that. Like if 80 to 90% of your sales, if not 100% are coming from direct, you know, then you have a very risky business and you've, you've kind of got some problems, okay? You, you, should, you should try to fix that. So um, that's pillar number two, right? Have the right business model direct. There's a saying that says, uh, that, uh, sorry, a saying these days um, that is direct or die or direct to consumer is what you'll hear, DTC or die. And it's, you, get, you can understand the meaning of that now. If you haven't building, been building a direct business, you're likely one of the people that's just been crushed during this pandemic. The great news is though, now that you have this information and you know this, you know that like what you start building now and what you start in, like if you start investing in yourself and your skill set to build a direct business, you know that in the future, no one can take it away from you, not even a pandemic. That's amazing. Okay, pillar number three, all right? Solve the marketing problem. The marketing, you guys, marketing is your number one problem, all right? It's everyone's problem. If you don't solve the marketing problem, you don't have a business. I, I, I hate to break anyone's heart. You guys, I think you intuitively know this already. Just because you have a website doesn't mean you have a business, okay? A website does not mean you have a business. It's a glorified business card unless you're making sales from it, okay? It's supposed to be a marketing tool that actually works for you to produce something. And uh, the most important point about this is, you know, um, there's, this, there's this stat that we, that we say often, which is, um, or that we cite often, and it's 99% of all Shopify stores fail. You guys, did you guys know that? 99, Google it. Google those exact words after this session. 99% of all Shopify stores fail, and you'll see. Now, this isn't like specific to Shopify. You could fill in Shopify with Squarespace, Wix, GoDaddy, WordPress, go down the list. Zenfolio, SmugMug, it doesn't matter to me. Take any, any one of these, Fazo, you know, name them all. Um, and it's because a website alone is not enough. It's, you're, you're not doing anything, right? At art storefronts, when you if you join art storefronts, 
we help you get your website live in 14 days and you're done with the website. You're immediately on to marketing because we know that you're going to have all of the tools and functionality and times a hundred that you ever had to have the wind at your back. Right. And from there, all you need to do is start driving traffic into the website. Right. That's what you got to do. You got to be spending the next five years, 10 years, 20 years on the marketing to actually make use of this thing. Patrick has this funny statement. Patrick's our head of marketing. And uh, he's the one who started the, the session at the beginning. And I, I love this analogy. He says, um, he says, uh, you know, our, like the, when you have the best features and technology for selling art on your website, right? Like an art storefronts website, we consider it the Ferrari for selling art. But that Ferrari is just sitting in your driveway without any gas in the tank. The gas is the marketing, right? So if you don't have gas in it, nobody, you can't use it. You're not even using it and it's a total waste, right? So, but once you do the marketing and you actually start driving these, this precious traffic to your art gallery website, which should feel like an art, a real art gallery, you know, you want to convert the maximum number of visitors into customers, right? It's hard to build traffic. So you do not want to waste any of that. Okay. So a website is not enough. And I think you guys see that now and you've got to solve the marketing problem, whether you do it yourself you hire a consultant, you hire an employee, you hire an assistant. The only thing you need to worry about is solving the marketing problem, all right? Products do not sell themselves. And, and by the way, here's another thing. The best products don't win. I'm, it, that might be news to some of you. Start looking at you know, some of the most successful entrepreneurs, Steve Jobs, all these different people, business owners, you can see, read their books. The best product doesn't win necessarily. The best marketing, usually wins. Okay. More often than not. So there's a lot, there's a big trash heap of incredible products, software products, companies that died that had amazing products, but they just could not figure out how to solve the marketing problem. And that's where the trash heap of most businesses go. you got to solve the marketing problem. So make sure you understand that that's the number one thing you need to solve up front. All right. Pillar number four, have quality inputs. All right. What are inputs? What I'm talking about is the information that you are getting in your head from where about how to run your business, how to think about your business, how to make decisions about your business, right? So like, are you reading blogs? Are you reading books? Are you listening to podcasts? Who are, are you listening to friends who have never done it before? You know, who are the people that are giving you ideas about what you think you should do for your art or photography business as your next steps? or what you're thinking about right now is your problem, right? Where did it come from? Like whatever th you think your problem is right now, where did it come from? Because it, it, may, it more than likely what we have found is there is so much BS out there that has hurt artists and photographers and taken, you know, added all this stuff in their mind that is just nonsense about what they think they need to be doing. Uploading to Fine Art America and every art gallery, you know, uh, website that's on the internet, right? Um, SEO, I got to spend my time doing search engine optimization. The one marketing tactic that stopped working in 2010, right? I hear that like probably once a week. How do I do my SEO? How good is your SEO? It's like, if you're talking about SEO, you literally are 10 years behind, you know? Where are you getting this information from? So check your inputs, okay? The only people that you should be listening to, okay? The only, and, and I'm not telling you to listen to me either. But the only people that you should be listening to are the artists and the photographers that have sold way more than you, okay? That have actually done it, that have actually done it. And when it comes to anybody else, like including myself, do all the background and credibility that you possibly can, okay? Because the quality of your inputs are going to determine how you think and what decisions you make today after this call, tomorrow, next week, the week after. There's a famous saying from Jim Rohn, he's a motivational speaker from like the 60s and 70s. He's awesome. And he actually was uh, the, the, the main like influence and mentor of Tony Robbins, which I'm sure many of you know. But um, you're the average of the five people you surround yourself with. And it's 100% true. I think it, it's in your personal life and in business. In business, the important thing is who are the top five people you surround yourself with right now that are actually like quality inputs that are way that are where you want to get to that have achieved what you want to get to if you're the smartest person out of those five 
you probably already hit your upper limit. So you need to surround yourself with very high quality people, you know, who can mentor you and, and, uh, and guide your thinking and your decision-making. You cannot run a business on an Island guys. You can't do it. doesn't matter who you are, right? You just, it's, it's, it's a recipe for disaster. Okay. So have quality inputs. That's pillar number four. The last pillar, pillar number five is perspective. I also say it as expectations. Okay. I can't tell you how many artists that I have worked with personally, who they start their bit. They're incredibly talented, incredibly talented. They start their business. They, they do a little bit of marketing. They send an email out, they make a couple social posts and then they're all bent out of shape because they didn't get a whole bunch of sales in 30 days. Right. And then they're like demotivated. They don't want to do anything. And some of them even shut their business down. Most of them stop doing marketing, stop, you know, persevering like on the spot. I'm giving you an extreme example, but this can come at three months. This can come at six months. Um, there could be people that are selling $20,000 in like two months or three months, and they're upset, you know, that it's not 50,000 perspective. Okay. Steve jobs has a famous quote. That's it takes three to five years to build anything, you know, substantial in, in a business. All right. Three to five years. If you think that this is a sprint and not a marathon, all you're doing is hurting your own mental, you know, your frame of mind and you're psyching yourself out. And so you're literally going to like, you're going to, you're going to shoot yourself in the foot and you're going to talk yourself out of building this business just because you're actually having a normal experience and you didn't know that it was normal. It's the same way for everyone, right? Like first year is the hardest. Second year gets a little easier. Third year, fourth year, fifth year is when you really get over the hump. Again, this is any business in any industry. This is not just for artists. Ask any entrepreneur who has actually created a successful business. Nobody is going to tell you that it takes any less than three to five years. If they do, they're lying. And I would, I would talk to somebody else and get some better information. So having the right perspective though is very empowering, right? Because you can celebrate your small wins. You can understand that like some things are going to work. Some things are not, you know, but it's a marathon, not a sprint, right? You're going to have good moments. You're going to have bad moments. Don't let them psych you out. Don't get mentally down when you're actually just having a normal experience. Like if I could chart out what your five years would be and just like write the whole thing out, it would be a whole bunch of like, you're going to have some serious lows in there, serious lows. And then you're going to have some highs. You're going to do a lot of things wrong and you're going to blow it and you're going to lose some money from it or lose some sales. And then you're going to do some things right. It's going to be this big, it's not going to be this hockey stick. It's going to be this big jagged experience of ups and downs. So if you go into it, knowing that it is so powerful so that you can stop, you know, I can help you stop from being one of these other people who just gave up or, you know, got depressed or things like that when all they were having was just a normal experience. All right. So that's the five pillar guys, five pillars. And, uh, I really hope that, um, you guys, you know, you, you wrote those down or you reflect on those because if you get those things right, if you get them right, you are going to already be like, I can't even tell you, you're going to be like in the 0.01% of this industry who is already failing at pretty much all of those. Okay. You know, if I, you run through, you got a, you got a clog drain and you're not focused on the right things. You got the wrong business model. You're not solving the marketing problem. You're just going in circles. You know, you have bad inputs. So every decision you make is bad. And then you have the wrong expectation. I mean, these things are just like, they're killing everybody. So get those right. And you're already going to be on such a better path. Okay. So I hope that that helps you guys a lot. Um, with that, let's go ahead and get to the questions. Don fast. I'm going to you first unmuted. You might have to unmute yourself. Hey, Don. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? I can. Perfect. Hey, um, this is my first time to be on a non-member deal, and I, I just love it. In fact, my first question was going to be, can you give me the, tell me what the attitude of the top 5% is, and then you just you just nailed it. So I, I could be a preacher myself of the five pillars, unclog the drain, right business model, solve the marketing, quality inputs, and, and then get your expectations right. Boy, I'm glad you did that. So you solved my first deal. Awesome. Now, um, the other day I was talking to one of your staff. Seriously, I'm, I'm getting near joining. I just have to 
my the entry level price against the the full bore uh, paying the whole deal. Um, I understand from different people. I've talked to a couple of members and different people that sure. are and and you know it's obvious that coming in at the at the highest level. I think it's gold or I forget what you call it, but that's obviously the right way to do it. But um, I might. So let's, Give me the real dirt on coming in at the thousand dollar level. I mean, is that just to get people started, or so they yeah, think? Yeah, it's only if you can't afford it. It's like our financing option. That's what it is. We only have one. We only have one product. Okay. All we've done is, you know, it, it was it was our our main product was obviously really expensive when it was only one thing that you could buy, and people wanted to get in at a lower level, you know, and still get the marketing help, right? Um, and so we created a way of, we created a way of doing that. You just don't get some of the key features and you can upgrade later, but, but yeah, like if you can't, if you, if you can't afford the main product, then you should start at the entry level. If you can, then it doesn't make sense to do anything else because you might as well, if, if you think about like what we've done at art storefronts, like I'll just tell you personally, like I'm the owner and I'm the founder and CEO. We literally tried to create an all-in-one solution with everything that you guys need, you know, at the cheapest cost possible, but it has to cover the marketing solution, right? And like compared to other businesses, like it costs like $75,000 or something to start a subway, right? For like a couple grand, you can literally get everything you need and, and you know that you could sell like hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. That, that's not going to happen to everybody, but you can because people are doing it. You don't need anything else aside from that. So if you wanna have like the wind at your back and everything you need, then you should go with that. And if you know that you're, you know, you've been an artist or a photographer, that's, you know, and, and you're gonna give it a real shot, you should do it. But if you can't afford it, and it's gonna stretch you really thin, then like, you know, you gotta make a better decision. Yeah, I think I'll just, you know, get, come up with the whatever the price is at the time and pay it because yeah, the other the other big thing too that i think is really important to mention is that on our main plan when you buy our main plan you get every feature that we will ever release in the future in terms of the software you know forever and we've always honored that for the last seven years you know so people that bought a membership like five seven years ago it was much less expensive because we didn't we didn't have like 90 percent of what we have now but We've never, ever, we never ever will raise that price and they've gotten everything. It's like they bought the stock at 20 and it's yeah. at a hundred. So we're always releasing features. We're literally doing it every week, every month, you know, it's a constant thing. And so you know that you're going to get all of that and you won't have to like pay the future rate if you upgrade later and it's more expensive. Yeah. So that's a pretty cool benefit. Thank you. Um, if somebody did come in at the, the beginning rate of a thousand, would they be lacking some of the customer service that the other people get? No. So they would still have access. They would just not have the features. Correct. You'll just, no. you'll just be lacking on some of the features. Yeah, in some ways it's good to get rolling. As you've been saying yesterday about, you know, the only way to ever work this out is to get your stuff out in front of the buyer. Yeah, that's, that's what right. They, so maybe, maybe there are advantages. I'm just thinking maybe if I wait another month or so or two and get them full money and start in at the, higher level i'm thinking maybe that's better overall i so i, I would talk who are you who are you, who are you speaking to well, at our i talked to a guy named brian um oh okay i don't know his last name um but um he because i was looking into the the demo and then you know it, it became obvious that i shouldn't do the demo until i'm ready so i i held off on the demo because of a lot of things so but that's who I got that. Alex was another guy I got that information from. Got it. And one of them said that, that nobody ever signs up for the, the entry level of a thousand. I didn't think that was quite right, but it's obviously very rare. It's very rare. Yeah. So yeah, I, I I've made it's up my probably mind. like one out of one out of 20 or something <laughs> like that. One out of 30. I mean, that's, yeah. yeah. I think I'll just uh, wait and go for it. You know, the whole thing. So that's what I had for today. Thank you so much. And cool. I, by the way, I love your day by day calendar thing that, that uh, Tyler was talking about. Yeah. Yeah. It's That's awesome. Great. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And oh, I just muted you. Sorry. Do you want to unmute yourself? 
Yeah, it's not, it's not it's not at all important. But when you were guessing at the pronunciation, it's Don Fast. So that's all. Okay, but that's not important for anybody else. So I'll get off the line. And you <laughs> well, thanks for letting me know. Yeah. I was actually curious about that myself. Um, and I think also, you guys, like, you know, I appreciate what Don said at the at the beginning of his statement, where when he was talking about, you know, the the the, the mindset and the you know the different things that I had covered with the pillars, you know, and and it's like. The thing that I say about that is if you can't, if you, if you don't have those things right, like there's really just no point, you know, like I, I can't help you. Our company can't help you. Like you got to have the right perspective. You got to have all these different things, um, you know, and, uh, um, and then, and then obviously we can, we can really help you. Um, so anyway, since, since we're talking, since we were talking about like demos and pricing and all that stuff. You guys, if you want to learn more about art storefronts, the next step is to request a demo, okay? That's the next step for anyone that just wants to learn more about art storefronts. Our team can go through all of the detail with you, okay? So what happens is when you request a demo, you fill out the form. It takes like 20 seconds. One of our team members will reach out to you directly and um, take a look at your art, learn about you and your goals, um, and then and make sure you're a good fit for what we do, that we can help you. Um, and then they will take you through a demo of all the features. We literally have hundreds of them um, and of everything that you want to see. Uh, and, uh, and of course, all of the detailed pricing because it's pretty detailed so that you can see what the options are. So if you're interested in doing that, request a demo. I'll also mention we have a fourth quarter sale, early bird sale going on right now. It ends at the end of the month. Okay, so the end of the month is actually Monday. But we're asking everybody to request a demo ASAP because the spots fill up really fast and it becomes really crazy at the end of the month. So um, please request a demo if you potentially want to take advantage of that sale as well, because you can save quite a bit of money to join our storefronts. Okay. Um, and uh, my, I said, I, Michael had a question in the chat, which was related to pricing. The entry level price at art storefronts that uh, is a $1,000 membership fee. You pay it once, never pay again. You get marketing consulting for life, okay? Plus $44 a month. From there, our highest package, our main product that I was mentioning um, to uh, Don a, a few minutes ago is uh, it's $2,800 one-time membership fee. Pay it once, never pay it again. And then uh, $59 a month, okay, from there. And you can get those, the, the $59, you know, the monthly fee lower if you pay annually, like it goes to like, uh, like $600 a year or $50 a month is what it comes out to. But that gives you a general idea. Again, request a demo if you have any further pricing questions so we can try to stick to the consulting. Okay, um, Camilla, um, I just unmuted you, you're next. Can you hear me? Yes, hi. Hi, hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good. So listen, I have a few questions. One is sure. related to pricing. I don't understand the difference. Um, I mean, I understand there are some features that you don't get with the $1,000, but what do you get actually for that amount? So that's what I'm asking. And if we can. There's so many, di there's so much, so many differences that that's why I'm asking you guys to request a demo so that when you talk to one of our people, they'll do a screen share with you and they'll pull everything up on the screen and you can take a screenshot and you can see everything like side by side and then they can demo the features for you so that you know what they are. So I have requested demo. So can you have somebody call me back? Yes, yes, we will. Um, Chris or April, can you get uh, Camilla on a list? Am I pronouncing your name right? Yeah, you okay. are. Okay. Um, in terms of the contract, the, the price per month, what is your length of contract and is the price fixed for a certain amount of time? What's your price uh, flexibility there? There's no contracts. It's just a subscription. If you go monthly, you can cancel whenever you want. And have you raised prices pr previously on people or not? We, ne we have never raised prices on any existing customers. We do raise the price of our storefronts, but only for new members because okay. we keep adding and building more stuff. So you get more as a member when you join. So, but when you buy, we never raise a price on you. Got it. What about, because I understand that you charge transaction fees um, on sales. 
uh, are those the same as credit card fees or are you charging your transaction fees and then there are like payment processing fees that are separate? They're separate and they vary and that's they'll be able that's one of the things that's right on that pricing sheet that you'll be able to see and they'll go over that with you in detail okay and then in terms of your consulting um do you provide consulting that is um just one-on-one -on -one, or is it mostly just the group coaching the group coaching calls that you have for members it's like this it's exactly what we're doing right here we do it every tuesday and thursday the difference is that everything that we're discussing privately with our members is all of the actual strategies and tactical, you know, that we're asked, we're having everybody do like from the art marketing calendar. And we're advising you on your business, like on any questions that you actually have. Are you there? And how many, barely, I think there was some interruption on the internet, but how many people do you typically have on these calls? Uh, there's typically like a couple hundred, but, there's only, only about like five to 10% of the people raise their hands and actually ask us questions. Everybody else is kind of like with their yellow pads, like learning, like they're in school because they're very, they're very informative. It's kind of like an entrepreneurship school as much as it is, you know, um, marketing, consulting, like tactical. So, okay. you, but we go through all the questions. You raise your hand, you do not get left out. So it doesn't matter. And there's, there's two days a week. So um, there's no, there's no concern on that. We will always make sure that, that, um, you get your questions answered. The, the zoom call like this, all it does is it, it allows us to do it at scale. You know what I mean? A lot faster and more efficient, but when you get used to it, you come every time and you can bring your, your question or two often, more often than not, you're not going to have like, you know, multiple questions, uh, every single week, you know? Yeah. And in terms of the people that are on your platform, um, in terms of the income that they are making, can you share a little bit about, you know, maybe your most successful artists that were already selling offline prior to, you know, joining you and had established business and then people who started online, you know, who, can you give me some examples of, you know, what um, types of income levels they've achieved? We literally have everything that you can imagine, right? So we have, we have people who just started out and maybe only just sold a few pieces to just like know that their art has sells, which is something that we recommend, obviously. Um, and and uh, you know, some of them are stay-at-home moms and dads, and their whole goal is just to make like an extra ten thousand dollars a year, right? They, they're not even trying to get past that. That's like success to them. And then we have everything all the way up to the very top, which is, you know, photographers and artists who are selling hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. I think our, our I think our top guy um, is going to be potentially it's going to be Jonah Allen this year. Um, and you can look at a review from in our Facebook uh, reviews um, from him. He attributes much of his success to us and he's probably going to do 300,000 to 400,000 this year. And, and did he start or or not? Did he did he have did he have business offline or was did he start online just selling online? Well, he had like he had some experience offline, but all of that obviously just went to nothing during the pandemic, you know. And he's been selling since you know since then like thirty five to forty five thousand dollars a month of his photography. Okay. Um, when people leave your platform, what are the issues? You know, why are they leaving? They're leaving because the business is done. It's over. It's time to hang them up. Do you know what that means? It means like if you have literally the best technology that you can have for your customer experience, like, you know, for buying art and you have like consulting and marketing and you're executing on all of that, and you literally like have the wind at your back as hard as possible and it doesn't work, it's pretty much time to shut that business down. Like you're not going to make it happen. It's over. So that's why like we're giving everybody the best chance at getting, at giving it a shot. I mean, at a certain point, what's the reason to leave? You got a monthly website fee. You're going to have it everywhere else if you want to keep the website. Right. So we don't really have a lot of cancellations. The people that are canceling um, usually have a very high opinion of us. 
and just say, you know what, I just couldn't get it to work, you know? And what that means, more often than not, what that means is that, um, in fact, it's not more often than not, it's pretty much 100% of the time. They really didn't validate that there are, they had a product that was sellable before they tried to go after the business. And that's why we're really kind of adamant to people who are just starting out, like, don't come onto the platform if you've never sold any art to somebody named, you know, that's not mom, dad, brother, sister, right? Like, you need to know that you have something. And if you do, then we're here to support you and, and literally give you the Ferrari behind your back. But if, if you don't have something, then you're putting a Ferrari, you know, you know, in the driveway of someone that has a product that's not going to sell. You know what I mean? So we try to avoid that as much as possible. And you'll notice like with our, with our process, when you talk to somebody, like we're very slow about signing people up. We're not trying to rush people because we want to make sure that they're a good fit and, uh, and we can make them more successful. And how do you make that evaluation during the demo or, you know, can you guys have a one-on-one -on -one call? It's, it's normally just like where, whether we're talking right now or they're talking to you, like it's on, it's on you, right? It's, it's like, we're telling you, like, have you sold this product? Like, have you sold at least like three pieces to somebody not named mom, brother, sister, best friend, complete strangers. If you haven't go do that first, go cross that bridge first. We even have a playbook for it called the validation playbook. In fact, can we get it in the chat? Um, Chris, I think Chris is on here with, uh, or April. Let's get it in the chat. Okay, they put it in there in the chat. If you want to, if anybody's listening to this and has not validated their art, click on that. And we give you a strategy on how to try to do that online during a pandemic. Um, we had our offline ways of doing it, but those aren't going to help you right now. Um, but people have done this and sold five, seven hundred, a thousand dollars worth of art and then ended up, you know, joining our storefronts um, after that. So if you are, if you are concerned that your art is not validated, I would go ahead and do that first. Because we would, we'd rather have you do that than, than uh, you know, sign up and and get in a position where you're like, I don't know why the marketing isn't working when it's actually your product. Yeah, I, well, I don't have a concern. Maybe I should, but I don't. But um, uh, if have I you sold it, yes, yes, but not a lot. But you know, like I haven't been doing really hardly any marketing. That's yeah. why I'm interested in what you guys are offering. Um, yeah, so. Um, if, if I was, uh, if I were going to keep my website, right. Until my subscription with the provider expires, uh, but signed up now, do you think that I could benefit from what you do? And is there a way to use it? Because I know a lot of your, uh, you know, playbook is tied to specific data analytics and, and things that you have in your website. So, yeah. you know. Would I even benefit from it or do I need to wait? I think you would benefit a lot because the marketing is the number one problem, as I said, right? And so when does your subscription end? Next year. How long? Like January? No, slightly later. Slightly later. Oh, you, you bought a big one then, huh? <laughs> um, I mean, look, I would just talk to our guys and see if there's, you know, a way to, 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 to work that out. You know, cause I mean the, the discount that we're giving, like you get a free year. I know like on one of the plants, like literally you get a free year if you buy like right now. So like that would literally wash that out and you could just move over and you're good to go. But the thing, the thing I look at is like, like, you know, you take the cost of whatever that, that year is. And then you look at like the fourth quarter is coming up and your whole next year of like ramping your business. I mean, if you're confident that you're, you have a product that can sell, isn't the net gain of what you would gain by having the best technology and the marketing and all that stuff going to outweigh the, like in terms of like sales that you should probably generate, you know, outweigh like the cost of that year that you paid for? I think it probably would, you know? But I also, you know, it's, it's not my full-time job. So I think that with marketing, because there's effort required, right? So there's limited yes. amount that I can spend on it. So I have to factor that in. And, you know, yeah, I think the product is sellable because anything in the art essentially is sellable, right? If you have right approach and you find the right audience, because it's not like you're buying a car, right? It's, you're exactly you're, right. I mean, looking at what kind of art is selling, it's, 
you might think it sells, but somebody else does them. So it's very subjective. But um, so my concern is a little bit around, you know, am I going to be able to actually use your advice and implement given my time constraint constraints? And second is if I do it with my website for next six months, you know, am I really going to be able to take advantage of what you're offering on the consulting side? I think you would, but I think you have to make that decision. Go, go see a demo, you know, go see a demo. I'll have them contact you and uh, you're going to have to make that decision on your own. Okay. And they do, they de do demo one-on-one -on -one and somebody mm -hmm. looks at what I have or yeah. how is that done? They okay. do a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. They'll do that one-on-one -on -one and you know, you'll like, you'll see all the numbers and the discounts and all that. And you can, you can kind of make the decision and they'll show you like, they'll go into more detail on the art marketing calendar if you want to, you know, cause like we highlight the things that you should do if you have less time. But I just sort of think that like, you know, when, when I, the, the, when I think about it logically, right. Um, I think that we, we have a one-time membership fee. So you, it doesn't matter whether you pay it now or in the future, you pay it once and you never pay it again. Right. And then from there you have a monthly website fee or annual or whatever. Right. And so, you know, you're at that point, you're able to take advantage of all of the marketing, right? And so are you going to have a little bit less of a benefit because you don't have those features? Yes. But again, if you get a free year, you're kind of washing that other thing out and that's pretty cool. You can move over right away and just start, you know, getting your business going in a better direction. And how in terms of the um, transaction fees and, you know, things like, is the email engine, for example, included in, in your pricing or is it separate? Is the Things what? Like, like the email, you know, the email engine or email software. Oh, got it. At all included or are there things on top that are software related things that I would have to have? The, so for the, there, there's, there's, there's nothing except uh, we integrate with MailChimp. That's the, the mail service provider. MailChimp allows you to have a free account up to 2000 emails. Okay. That's part of the reason why we work with them. They're great. Uh, they're a great platform, but so if you don't have 2000 emails yet, that's going to be free for you. So there's no extra expense there. Um, the only other expense that you will have, we, we do not ad, we do not advocate that you should be buying ads or anything of that nature early, especially early on. So you will not be spending money on ads. Um, some of the marketing tactics that we have involve buying a print, like buying one of your prints, but you buy it at like a wholesale cost and you can do like maybe a giveaway or something like that. We've got like full playbooks for this. So the only expense that you will have is like the cost of a print. Now, what we tell everybody though, is that if your budget is really tight, you, um, you buy a cheaper print, like a photo, a, pa a print on a photo paper, your cost can be under $10, you know, or maybe it's like $15 if you get it matted or something like that, but you can keep it really low. When you get more successful, you can do like prints on metal and things like that, that you can use in your marketing. Um, but, uh, but that's it. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you. So yeah, if you can have somebody call me either in today in the or afternoon, just not in the mornings, that would we be will. great. We will. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks, Camilla. And by the way, if anybody else wants a call to like get a demo, like, you know, you got, make sure you fill out the demo request form, make sure you fill that out. But once you've done that, if you want to put your name in the chat as well, or if you've already done it, we can kind of get a, a curated list to make sure that you get contacted um, before the end of the month too, just in case you want to take advantage of that and ask more questions and make sure that you see the platform. So um, we'll have, yeah, so just put it in the chat window. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll get that list at the end of the session. Um, the other thing I want to mention too, cause I think Camilla kind of asked this question and I could see, um, Lee, uh, if I'm pronouncing that right, Lee Ali asked me in a private question as well, something of the similar nature. Um, but like, I really want you guys to understand that like what we're doing at art storefronts here is we are trying to equip you with everything that you need, right? To build a successful art business, right? And have the wind at your back. It includes a lot, right? So we're giving you the marketing advice, the strategy, the plan, the ongoing consulting. We're giving you the best technology and it's gonna constantly improve. We're constantly investing in that, okay? Um, 
but it's all designed for you to build your own business. Okay. Your own business. So what you do, like, just imagine if I, like, imagine if this was like a physical retail gallery and we were selling like, you know, the best setup for a physical retail gallery with a marketing plan and everybody around the whole country, like open their own retail art gallery in downtown. Like if we had 4,000 people do that, everyone's going to do different. The people are selling different products. Some people are selling originals only. Some people are selling limited editions only. Some people are selling all three, you know, limited editions, open editions, and originals. Um, some people are selling, you know, open editions and then some merchandise. Other people prefer to stay completely away from the merchandise. You know, there is, you know, some people are selling originals that are no less than $20,000 per. Other people are selling originals for $1,500 or $1,000. It's all across the board, right? And what you, it's your business though, at the end of the day, we're not running the business for you. We are advising you and coaching you and equipping you to try to help you turn this into a great business and giving you everything that we possibly can to, to like increase your sex success potential as much as possible, right? But every individual is different. The effort you put in, your product, you know, the quality of your product, how well you're able to market it and sell it, you know, as an individual, all of those things are gonna factor in to how much you sell, right? We're not gonna determine how much you sell. You're gonna determine how much you sell. You're the entrepreneur and it's your business, guys, okay? So that's what we're doing here. Um, and uh, Lee asked, you know, what if you get, join our storefronts and get no sales? You know, what happens in the end? I, that, should ne that should never happen because you should know that you already have a sellable product for sure before you join. Okay. Because if you don't, then, you know, if you put all the best, everything behind you and you can't make any sales, like understand you guys, you're going to use the exact same software, the exact same website software, the exact same marketing advice and coaching. Everything is the same, right? As the people who are selling hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, there's no difference. There's not one feature difference that they have that you don't. Of course, if you're on our top plan, right? Um, but there's no less access to advice, consulting, or strategies. So what is the variable then, right? Why are some people selling way more and some people don't sell as much? Why would that be, right? Well, of course, it's the individual, the business owner, how they execute, and their product. That's it, right? I mean, if you're smarter and more intelligent, you're going to sell more than the guy who's not, period. It, that's, that's just how it works, right? Products don't sell themselves, so if you have a background in marketing or something like that, and you're coming in, you know, you're going to do better. If you have an established email list of 500, 1,000, 1,500 people, but when you join our storefronts, you're going to go faster than a guy who has three emails or none, you know, of course, of course, right? I mean, that's, it's just common sense. So I hope that helps explain that. I just, I, I, we really like to be real here, you guys. Because again, in this industry, it's like, you know, it's like sometimes people get the idea, like we're selling magic beans here or something. It's like, what is the average sale of, a, of an artist at art storefronts? It's like, it's the wrong question to ask. Everybody's running their own business. You know what I mean? Like we're not running their business for them. So it's really good to understand that. Um, and uh, yeah, so, okay, let's keep going here. Jeffrey Packard, you're next. You're unmuted. Probably have to unmute. Okay. Hey there. It's great to, uh, to realize that I have your back at me and I'm so happy. And, um, I wanted, uh, be signed up for the, uh, uh, the next level. Awesome. Okay. Are you already a member? I don't know. Am I? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I, I see what you're saying. You're saying that you're ready to, you want to sign up for art storefronts and, or take the next step, right? Yes. So your next step is request a demo. Yes. And then, How do I do that? Uh, can you, click, a, click the link in the chat. Can we get it one more time in the chat right now? Chris, do you see the chat there, Jeffrey? Chat. Yes. Click chat, you'll see that window there. And April just put it there. Thank you, April. Click that link right there and fill out the form and you're good to go. And one of our guys will get in touch with you. 
So uh, how do I do that? Uh, click, you mean click the link in the chat? Yeah, uh, where do I, I put my uh, email address, uh, email? Yeah, so when you click that link, it's gonna have a form there. You'll put your name and your phone number and your website. Oh, we you do know, that all right. Your email and then they'll, they'll contact you. Okay, good. Very Excellent. Good. Thank you, Jeffrey. Good to see you here today. All right, Daniel Webster. All right. Good to see you again, Daniel. I just unmuted you. Daniel, you there? You got to unmute yourself. All right. I'm going to give you until five, five more seconds and then I'll come back to you. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, Chantal. Uh, Chantal Weaver, I'm going to you now. I just unmuted you. Okay. You there you me? are. Hi. Hey How are you? Awesome. How are you? Oh, very. This is like a new language for me. I mean, I can speak three other languages, but I, this is a this is a language that's a little more difficult. It it is. Um, but you'll get it. You'll get it soon enough. I hope so. Glad um, to have you. I have like four. I'm I'm more of an art agent. I'm an artist as well, but I'm wanting to represent a couple of people that I just started representing, going to art galleries and museums and uh, different venues in order to be able to sell their work. But it's difficult. I live in Miami, so with the uh, COVID-19 is difficult. Some get galleries are closed. Some galleries are only open a few hours a day and you have to catch them at the right time. So I think this is a really good venue to try to sell the artist's work. My question is how many people view the storefront? I mean, how many, like, is there collectors? Are they gallery owners? Are they just people who have a, an affinity for art or they want to be art buyers or you know, how many people look at the storefront, art front? I'm sorry, I can't remember the name. Art storefronts. Art, yeah, storefronts. How many people look at this, at your- at so We don't, we, we're not a, like an art gallery website, like a Fine Art America or a Saatchi Art. Yeah. We are literally the exact opposite. Like we don't believe in that business model. Um, we, what we do is we empower individual artists and photographers okay. with their own you know, international art gallery, what it just happens to be online, it's their website, but we consider it a art gallery business, their own art gallery. Okay. Um, and where they own their customers leads, you know, uh, and, and they build their own business and we're helping them build their own businesses independently. And we also, we also work with art galleries as well. We probably have, I don't know, several hundred on the platform that represent other artists. And so they have an art gallery website. They're, they're essentially, just using everything the same. So, but they just, you know, they represent 10, 20, 30 or more artists. Um, and, and they're, but everybody's building their own individual businesses direct to consumer. Okay. Okay. And the art galleries, if they have artists, they would basically, if they, if they're representing artists, they would represent their work on this on their own website, on right? Their own website. We're in the background, right? So nobody knows you have an art storefronts. These art galleries yeah. have an art storefronts website. I mean, it's okay. not hard to tell because the yeah. features and functionality are very unique, but it doesn't say it anywhere, right? Um, and so, but they're representing their own artists on their own. We don't even know who they are necessarily. And they're marketing for those artists and building, but building their own art gallery business, right? So. Okay. Yeah, so you're basically, you would create, so do you give the information on how to create an online gallery, on how to market it, or? Yes. Or yeah. and, and would you find, would you have to have another uh, company like design the online gallery? Nope. It's you all ready to go. That? It's all ready to go. It's just like all you hang the pictures virtually, or? You got it. You got okay. it, exactly. Because think about an art gallery, right? Yeah. The minimalist. You mm -hmm. got to get at, you People do this wrong all the time. You got to get out of the way, right? Because normally art galleries, they all have white walls, right? There's no wallpaper. There's no yeah. colors of yeah. anything because that all distracts from the art. You want the buyer's eye to get when they walk in the door to yeah. go right to the art. Well, we're doing the exact same thing. We want everybody doing the same thing virtually, right? Uh -huh. when, they, when they load your website, they're literally walking into your art gallery, right? Get everything out of the way. Let your art take center stage. Okay. Okay. Um 
because one person that I work with is in Vancouver. He has been in commercial photography for the three past decades and does very well in Vancouver. But, uh, and he's also a fine art photographer, photographer. That's his passion. And he's very good. I mean, he's up there with a lot of black and white sepia colored photography, fine art photography. And uh, he's done very well. Like, I mean, he's done well in Mexico City because he was from Mexico. But in, for example, in Vancouver, which I'd never, I could never have imagined that, they, you know, that um, they're very conservative. So if it's artsy or they don't quite understand, it's, I think that each product, certain products have to go, has to go to a certain clientele, like maybe LA has a certain, you know, um, what's the word? I can't think of the word in English. Uh, they have a certain liking of certain art. For example, yeah, well, Miami, they like yeah. colorful, colorful blue waters and, and, you know, people on the beach and all this. He's more of a archetypal, magical, you know, there's a story behind his picture. Yep. And, and you're, when you go online, you're going global. You go, you go global, it's, right? It's very, it's very different. But what you're explaining is exactly correct. And it's why, like, I am very bearish, not bullish on the art gallery business model. I, I am not what? a fan. What word did you use? I said bearish. It's, it's like an investing term, right? Bearish means you think the stock market's going to go down. Bullish yeah. means it's going to go up. I'm very bearish on the art gallery business model. I think they're in deep trouble. Um, and I don't recommend, you know, I don't necessarily recommend anybody starting an art gallery, you know, online website, like to represent artists. And the reason is because, you know, it, you're, you literally like, you, you're taking the, the, the requisite marketing work that you have to do for an individual artist and you're multiplying it by the number of artists that you have because every one of them is gonna be going after a different niche of people based on who has an emotional sub, a connection with their subject matter, right? Yeah. So you're, you're gonna be fighting 10 wars at a time with 10 artists, right? It's just, it's better to one, have. just one. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, if, if, it's, if you have just one, then yeah. you can help build that one person's business. That's, yeah, a that's what I'd like to do, work with that one person first. And then because if you put too many in one, then it's like people get confused and it takes exactly. away from the- uh, It's even less about the confusion. It's, it, it, you're right, there is some confusion, but it's more about like, when you understand what it takes to build a great business, yeah. like you have to devote everything to that and not okay. like spread like, you know, 10 artists thin, you know, because even if you do it for that first person, like you're going to have to keep doing it. Like no one's just going to pick up that ball for you, you know, because yeah. part of doing great marketing is you got to do it consistently. Exactly. Like, you can't stop. You have to, you got to keep like, you know, making like, you know, deposits into your, into your prospects, emotional bank accounts, so yeah, to speak. Exactly. Right. That's as soon as you time. stop, you lose that goodwill and you, and they're not top of mind anymore. And then when it, when, you know, when they get a open wall space or whatever, you're not the one that they buy from. So those are the challenges inherent in that. So I would start really small. Yeah, start small. I, that's what I'd like to do. My next question is like, for example, do you have people that they know that the name, the, the, the name is like art storefronts? You're the marketing people, right? So you basically, you don't have like a, a list of uh, collectors uh, nope. or um, they, that's nope. just- and don't, ever, and don't ever fall for that. No, that, no. Don't ever buy a list. Everybody listening, don't ever buy a list. Don't ever, there is no list of collectors that's ready that's sitting and waiting to buy your art. The, okay. the, the list of collectors you need are the people who are emotionally connected with your subject matter. That's who you need to find. And that's the audience you need to grow. And you need to turn that into a list. That's what we are helping you do at, like in our, with our marketing consulting at Art Storefronts. Yeah, you don't get a little black book. You just, you create no your way. black book and you go out, you go, you go research who the people are, right? Yeah, and it also implies that it's going to be easy, right? Like you're just going to buy something and then you're going to build a business off of it. Like yeah. whoever, you know, propagated that lie, like my goodness, my mm -hmm. goodness. Mm -hmm. Well, very interesting. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to speak with uh, my, uh, the artist that I'm working with in Vancouver and let him know about this site because he doesn't know about all this, you know. It's, uh, it's a good, it's very good. I, I think that it, it worked very well for him. Excellent, Chantal. Well, it was good talking to you. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Okay, Daniel, I'm going back to you now. 
Um, I just clicked on mute. Let's see if it, if it works. Okay, did it work? Yes, gotcha. Okay. Uh, just a couple of comments on the, the questions that Camilla was asking. Uh, you might want to differentiate between the consulting training that you're doing with the online meetings and the and a support call or the support material that's out there uh, on your site. My understanding is that there's a lot of support material where you can just go say, I'm having a question with this and and maybe there's a video already to answer that question. Oh yeah, there's so much. I mean, we have, we've got the marketing resource vault, you know, um, and that's private. And so like all of our past workshops that we've been, that we've done, that we, cause we do them every Tuesday and Thursday, right? You can go back and watch any of them. All the resources are there. Um, obviously we have like pre-made templates for email, subject lines, pre-written copy. I mean, we're giving you, we're giving you everything you need to execute like on a, on a daily basis. And all that stuff is in what we call the marketing resource vault. And uh, when you, when our, one of our people takes you through a demo, they can show you that too. But there's, there's a lot of stuff. And, and one of the things on the qualification, whether your product is saleable, um, when you fill out the, the form, it asks you for your website, if you have a website. And I know that, that the person who was uh, hosting my demo went to my website and looked at all the pictures and so forth before we, before we had the thing. So he was familiar yeah. with my work and, and I'm assuming he thought it was saleable because we continued the demo. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I mean, it, like the thing is, is that it, we're not here to pick racehorses. We've learned that very early on because there's people who, I mean, there's people at our company that might say, you know, they might say like behind the scenes that somebody is like really average work. And then somebody else will be like, what are you talking about? That's, I love that stuff. And then you look at the sales numbers and they're selling really well. You know what I mean? Like nobody can pick a racehorse. I'm, I will tell you that for a fact. And that's the same thing for whether it's art or whether, I mean, sorry, whether it's paintings or photography, we've learned that like, it's, that's why we're like, it's, it's on you. Like you gotta make sure you gotta sell a piece or to, to some strangers. We're telling you flat out, like, if you haven't done it, do it, you know, and then, and then join. You know, if, if you validated it. Yeah, it's a matter of, like you said, it's a matter of finding your niche. Uh, yep. I, enjoy take, I enjoy taking pictures of uh, what my wife calls old rocks. She said, you just go take pictures of old rocks. I tell her they're not making any new ones. I'm kind of stuck with old ones. Uh, but there's some people, they don't want pictures of rocks. There are other people that they can look at the rocks that I find that have interesting patterns and they just go crazy over them. Exactly. I'm looking for the ones that go crazy. Exactly. And so you find those and you market to those, right? Right. Like crazy. So there you have it. All right. Thank you, Daniel. Uh, oh, Camilla, you're back. All right. Camilla and then Don. Camilla just unmuted you. Great. Can you hear me? Yes. So I have some more general questions. Um, All right. You use social media for some of the marketing. I saw you do um, a lot with Facebook ads. Um, what about platforms? You know, what can you say about these different platforms like, you know, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest, for example, for artists and how you incorporate that into what you do? So stay away from Pinterest. Um, we have not seen any sales come through from Pinterest, nothing. We've even had people say, I'm getting all this traffic from Pinterest, 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 you know, and we go and we, we investigate and there's nothing, nothing like empty traffic, right? We call it vanity traffic. It's like you get a bunch of clicks and people who come to the site, but they don't, they don't add anything to their cart. They never buy. So we're open to all of these things. Obviously. I mean, we're marketers. We're always looking at everything like LinkedIn and it doesn't matter what it is. Uh, and as soon as we see that something is working, right? Because when you have 4,000 members and we're working with everybody and you have all of that data to work from, we tend to find what works the fastest, right? And then we reverse engineer that and we get it out to our members as quickly as possible so everybody can do it in a step-by-step -step playbook. Um, so, but to, to, to answer the first part of your question, I think, a good way of thinking about all these different platforms is like, 
Um, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, they're the modern day like CNN, MSNBC, Fox News. All they are, are they're broadcasting platforms, right? And so, you know, and the same thing with email. Email is another one, right? They are simply ways of broadcasting a message, you know, to a lot of people that happen to be congregating on that specific platform. No different than if you had like a TV ad, you know, like, if people like companies buy TV ads on a specific show, like it might be like a, you know, like a cooking show because they have a, they want that audience for that cooking show, you know? And so we we're advocating that the time should be spent on, you know, uh, email, Facebook and Instagram primarily. And then when people get more advanced, they can start doing some more on YouTube, but that's at a way later stage because your ROI on YouTube is going to be way, 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 way lower. So, you know, in the early times when you have limited time, you got to really ramp up to, and, and when I say like, when should you do YouTube? It's like a hundred thousand dollars in sales or more, maybe even higher than that because you don't need it to get there. So focus where the attention, the attention, everybody is, you know, and that's Facebook and Instagram. Makes sense. It's so funny because I saw, um, I saw your comment from like 2017 on some blog about Pinterest. And I thought maybe something changed because I just recently sort of started looking at Pinterest. So it's, it's a good comment and I agree because I've only been on it for like a few weeks and I can see it generates traffic, but it's, it, that's what it does, right? And with ads, actually I tried an ad accidentally and it did generate actually a lot of traffic, but it was, um, so I, I don't know, I didn't know if there's something, you know, maybe that you found that there's a trick to how to do it on Pinterest or, or you know, since 2017, or if it's just not, not yeah. working. So, so first off, Camilla, stop buying ads. Don't buy any more ads. Don't, don't ever boost the post on Facebook either. $5 and it was like, oh, okay. it. but it okay. was like, I got a lot of traffic from it. And I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, like, look, the, you guys, the reason that you should not buy ads is because until you have the right marketing system in place, you will never get an, a return on investment of the money you're spending on your ads. Never, 100% guaranteed. You will not make it pay. So don't do it until your marketing system is fully in place. You gotta have consistency. You gotta be regularly broadcasting and like doing the right things. We call it romance marketing. And then maybe once you're doing all that, when you're having a lot of other success, there is a time when ads might be appropriate, but it's always warm ads first, not, not cold ads, okay? Cold meaning, cold, cold ads are to people who have never heard of you before. They have no idea who you are, what you do. They're just looking at like an image and it's like an introduction to you, okay? That's a cold ad, okay? Um, a warm ad is to somebody who already is on your list, following you, already knows who you are, whole different ball game. You have to fully exhaust warm before you even touch cold. All of this is fully mapped out at art storefronts for everybody. You know, and, and, and Camilla, like, I'm glad you brought this up too, because like, this brings me like my first thought when you brought that up is about like the inputs, you know what I mean? Like, this is an example of like, you know, somebody might say something about Pinterest or you hear it somewhere and you're like, I want to check that out and try it. And it looks interesting. And then it starts generating some traffic but you know, you're down this rabbit hole where if you were with us, like we would have saved you all that time. All of our members would have told you that too. It's part of the benefit, right? Of when you surround yourself with other people who you know, are, are at a different level or who have done these things, to, have, to be able to ask a question like in our private members forum and get that answer immediately. Like, has anyone made P Pinterest pay here? Has, like, is anyone that's successful using Pinterest and like getting sales from it? Yes or no? And like within an hour, you'll probably have five or so responses. And then that's part of the point, right? That's why we have that. I want you to have access to that information so that on a daily basis, you're making better quality decisions on how you're spending your time every single day. Because that's what's going to get you to the success you're after the fastest. Well, I totally understand what you're saying because I checked actually some of your members and there were they don't have huge presence. Some of them have some, but not huge. And then I read that one artist actually was successful on it. So I thought, okay, well, maybe, 
you know, that's why I was investigating it. And that brings me to another question, which is, um, you know, getting people to their website versus the features on the website, right? Marketing versus the software behind it. Um, and, you know, like, I know you obviously are a software provider, um, so that, you know, you will talk about how valuable the website is, but in your, you know, how much of it is, um, you know, can you measure, I don't know, like if you get hundred people to the website, how many people usually will leave before buying because of the website features, you know, like what's the, what's the balance of getting people there versus that getting them to buy? It's pretty significant. I mean, like, the, I think that the, the question you're asking, like, I'll, I'll answer it. It's like, we have people who regularly come over from Shopify, all right, and GoDaddy, Wix, and all of these, and immediately are selling more. Like, people with established sales, right? They're like, I'm doing $20,000 a month or $50,000 a year on this platform. They have some consistency. They move over, and their conversion rates are immediately higher, right? They're already getting more sales as a result of moving over. The reason is because, you know, when you like art is a high friction sale, right? Like people have a lot of questions and there's a lot of things that can stop people in their tracks when they're in that buying process. And the features, all it is, is it's like a robot that's working for you 24 seven. Like, oh, you don't know if it's going to mesh with your wall color. No problem. I got a wall color pre wall preview tool for you here with all the best selling paint colors, right? <laughs> Can't leave. You can stay right here and keep going, right? Um, you want to try it on your wall? You're not sure if it's going to work in your house? Cool. You can use the augmented reality feature. You don't even have to download an app. It's right. Just click the button on your phone and you're projecting it on your wall. One of our, one of our photographers, he, he, he was written up in, a, in the newspaper. Um, there's a, you could probably search for the article on our blog. From the, when we released the augmented reality feature, his sales tripled. Tripled. It's kind of wild, right? So... When you're the thing is when you're when you're doing marketing and you're and you're out there, there's a lot of new people that have never heard of you that are coming to your site. You know what I mean? And so you don't have the benefit of like being in person. And so all these different things send a message about you, your brand, the quality by the quality of the experience that you're providing. You know what I mean? And um, and and it all makes a difference. So you're gonna do a lot better when you have the right technology behind you. But but in your case, if you want to roll with that website, you know, I think I, you, if you, the marketing is more important than the website, way more, hmm. way more. I think, but, you know, like, I always say this to people when they're like, they're, somebody's like, I need to have a new feature. You guys, like when we have like a thousand more features than exist anywhere that like somebody will always say, Hey, but when are you going to have this exact feature? I'm not sure I could be successful without it. And I put my head in my hands, obviously, because I'm like, you mean that with the thousand other features that we have that you can't get anywhere else, you're not going to be successful. I mean, it doesn't make any sense, right? Um, you know, when people are already selling as much as they are without that one feature. But I say to people that you have to understand when you're doing the right marketing and your marketing's on fire, if you simply had a phone number as your website, people will call you and say, I want to buy that piece. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the marketing is the big deal. Like people will pull that art out of you when you're marketing it good enough in the right way. Like the website is just going to get more than you otherwise would have. So does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm guessing you're saying that your marketing can do that, right? What's that? And I guess you're saying that your marketing can do that. Of course. I mean, like, look, I'm not going to oversell it. I, all I'm going to say is talk to our customers. Mm -hmm. That's how okay. that, talk to our customers and, 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 and get the facts from them if you want to, you know, and uh, ask them how our marketing consulting is and then compare that, you know, to anything else that you might buy. Like you should do that. I think that's a smart decision, right? Who else has the reviews and the credibility? Like you should go and make it the best decision that you can. Okay. Yeah. I've talked to one of your, well, I've uh, messaged with one of your customers and she spoke very highly um, highly of you. Um, in terms of the emotional content, um, you know, I, I'm how are because that's probably the, the biggest challenge, right? To find people or to attract people in a way that that, that relate to the content. So, um, can you tell me more about how 
your marketing, you know, can, can do that or is going to do it? Well, I think that, you know, some public blog posts that we have that you might find interesting is like romance marketing. Like you could probably just Google it to say romance I've, marketing I've, art storefronts. Have you read about it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so that gives you kind of the framework, but you know, you, 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 you got to take the subject matter of, of a piece of art or your feet or your, like your genre of art. Right. And you know, you, you, you have to figure out what is the emotional connection in that. Right. Oftentimes it's the actual, you know, like, let's say somebody's painting an elephant, like elephants in the wild, like obviously the subject matter is the elephant. So you would want to target people that have a love for elephants, nature, uh, elephant conservation or something like that. If your stuff is more abstract, like I see behind you, um, then what I have seen, the most successful abstract uh, artists that I've seen and photographers are the ones who have like a clear inspiration behind the piece, okay? And then it's the inspiration and it's them that actually creates the connection. So somebody I know that is like extremely successful like extremely successful abstract uh, artist. Um, every one of his um, paintings is uh, based on a biblical quote, like a passage in the Bible. And so it's like the easiest, like you, it, when you look at the art, you would never ever know or guess that. It's not like there's not a cross in there. There's nothing. It's like, but his entire audience is, is Christians, you know? And it's like, this passage inspired me to do this piece and he talks about and he markets it well. And I mean, it's, it's really an incredible thing, you know? And I think that's the lesson that I like to give to like abstract artists is the more that you can like talk about that connection and, or that, you know, the, your inspiration, what, what is in there, what is that? And that's the description of your piece. And that's what you're marketing when you're getting it out there. The more people are, there's gonna be people out there that are gonna be like, whoa, that connects with me, you know? And that's how you're gonna like, you know, deepen that connection and get people to, uh, to, to want to like follow you and buy your stuff. Yeah. It's a, it's a very challenging thing I find because for me, you know, because I'm inspired by nothing very concrete, right? It's just here or there. And I've tried to do that. And I think it's, um, it's a challenge. Maybe you could try to pin that down though, the next time you paint one, right? Like I know what you're talking about because I used to write a lot of music. Like in my day, I used to be a musician. Um, when I was younger and like, my, like whenever I got inspired to like write a song, it came out of thin air. Do you know what I mean? However, well, however, I don't know how this happened, but like the lyrics and all that stuff, it always had something to do with my life at that moment. It had something to do with something going on in my life, whether it was a relationship or a, you know, something going like some up or down emotionally. And maybe there's a way to tap into that. And, um, and, you know, and, and, and try to like, you know, uh, make, you know, get that out there as your inspiration. Well, yeah, I've, I've been working on it. Let's just put it that way. Some of it, it. Cool, but I still feel it's not as strong as, you know, somebody doing pet portraits, right? Because it's very easy to find that niche, you know, anybody who has a pet or, you know, and people are crazy about their pets. It, I think it's more distinct versus with a feeling like, you know, I'm in this emotion or that emotion, it's a very intangible market, basically. Yeah, you know, well, I mean, the other thing too is that, that I've seen is like, cause we have a lot of successful like abstract artists on our platform, like um, Kim Zabia is, is one that you might want to write down. Kim, like Kim is awesome. Um, her last name? Her last name is Z-A-B-B-I-A. -A. Like you should message her. Um, and, uh, like she'll, she'll go on Instagram and like, she'll do some of the marketing or whatever. And she'll sell like a handful of originals, like easy, you know, uh, I'm not saying it's easy. I'm saying she, she'll sell yeah. them like one day, you know? And, uh, but, but I think the, the other part of that is like when you're the brand, right? Because you need to be a brand as well. So when you're the brand and like all of your pieces kind of like fit into like, you as a brand, then, then, it, then that creates the connection as well. Yeah. The more that and, you, the more you define that, the bigger your sales are going to get. And you guys are able to help people with that. Well, I mean, I'm helping with you, with you with it right now. 
Well, you're telling me what I knew, but I'm still like having a cast to get there, you know, to actually, because it's one thing to know the concept, but the other is to actually execute on it, you know, and, and, and put it into something more tangible, so. Yeah, well, we're gonna tell you exactly like what to do with that message, but you need your message, right? And we're gonna tell you how to, how to say it, how to like all sorts of stuff, right? But like, you know, you, you like, I would, I, would, I would take what I'm saying, like, and when we get off and like, um, you know, look at your pieces that you have there behind you and around and like, start thinking about them a little bit and start thinking about like, what is my theme? What is my brand, right? Um, one of the, one of like something I think will help you, Camilla, is I, I, when I'm coaching our members, I always say like, you need to think of yourself like a documentary. Okay. Like you watch a documentary on Netflix about a, a chef or a, you know, I, I watched one recently about this rock, you know, this cliff climber guy, you know, doing these crazy climbs. Right. Well, look what happens in those stories. You know, he's, they're filming him the day before he's going to do this crazy climb. He's talking about what he's about to do, you know? Um, and then they're filming him when he does it. And then there's the after, this is all a part of the marketing, right? That you want to be doing. You are a documentary in a way we, as the art consumer, we want to know like how you're thinking. We don't get it. Like, I don't get how you do what you have behind you. Right. And so, you know, if you're going to make a piece, I want you to talk about like, okay, I'm a, like, here's what I'm about to do. You know, I'm thinking about this and that, and, you know, um, and I'm inspired by this today. So I'm going to go after it guys. And I'll show it to you when I'm halfway done. Right. And you just, you take people through the journey of you as an artist and creating this stuff and you open up your world a bit and like, that is entertaining. It's, um, and that's where the connection comes in. Cause you're like, oh my gosh, I heard her talk about this. And then I see this piece now. And all, all of a sudden I'm like, whoa, like I have this whole different meaning of this piece that she's showing me. And it's amazing. That's doing it the right way. Thank you, Nick. I appreciate, um, I appreciate your comments. I, I of course. And what you're talking about. Of course you got it, Camilla. Um, and I, I get this question a lot, you guys, um, about how do you do that as a photographer, right? Because a photographer is like, I, you know, I, I don't just paint something. I can't just like paint live or something like that. And you do the exact same thing, right? So, so photographers, like when you're going to go out and, and do a shoot, you know, of something, you're like, you're planning it out. Like talk about what you're going to, what you're planning on doing, right? How you're plotting it out, what you're thinking about, you get your equipment ready, right? Then you're driving on the way there, you know, or you're getting set up, you know, take pictures of, show that stuff, right? Documentary, documentary, documentary. That's what we want to see, okay? We have a, one, of my, one of my favorite members at Art Storefronts, Andy Crawford, for you photographers out there, um, look him up, Andy Crawford, C-R-A-W-F-O-R-D. Um, in fact, everybody should look him up. Um, and uh, um, he's from Louisiana. And uh, he's a Bassmasters like photographer and, but he does fine art photography of like the swamps in Louisiana. And he, he'll be, he'll, he'll be like documenting himself like on a, on a um, kayak going down a swamp with like crocodiles in it, you know, and, and do it. He'll do a video talking about how he's scouting a location for his shoot, you know, and then he'll go and do it. And like, then he'll be knee deep or like waist deep in swamp water like literally waist deep in swamp water, take with a tripod in the water, like taking these shots, you know, and he'll have a pictures of that. And then he'll have the shots from that session. And you, you, you get so much different value, like as an art consumer, as like somebody who's following him, like when he's charging more money for his, for his prints and for, you know, for his photography, it makes all the sense in the world. Cause now you, it's not just like, Oh, here's a swamp photo. It's like, no, this guy is trekking through the swamps and you, you're seeing it and he's in there and he's taking these things and you've got this whole story behind it and it's incredible. It's not like, this is like a really warm experience. Um, and you know, another thing that I say, guys, this is a really important one. Your art is not just the physical good, okay? The equation that I say is your art equals the physical good, right? Your, your, your original, or your print or whatever the physical good is, plus the experience. It's not just the physical good. It's the experience along with it. 
What is the experience? Where, does, where do people get that experience? It's from you, okay? It's from you know, the romance marketing and this whole documentary thing I'm talking about, okay? And, uh, and why is that important? It's because when I'm looking at this piece on my wall right here, I, it's not there because it's just pretty colors and, 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 and you know, a pretty image. It's because I know that artist. I know how he created it. I know what he's all about. I'm a, I'm a super fan. It makes me feel really good. It inspires me because he inspires me, right? And the subject matter also inspires me. And when people come over, I'm able to tell them about that experience. It's not just like, here's this art on my wall. I'm able to like talk about it. You won't believe what this guy does. Like to do this, it's amazing. Like, you know, this is his whole deal. You know, this is his mantra. It, it, that's the thing, right? It's the physical good that's on the wall plus the experience together creates the magic, okay? This is what we're coaching everybody on, you guys. Like, this is what our whole formula is all about. Like, if you're gonna build a great business, you know, you gotta, you gotta understand that, you gotta execute on that. You have to, because, you know, the more value you create in the world, you guys, like, the bigger your business, your art business is gonna be. That's the thing that I love when people are like, um, you know, I just wanna paint for myself, but like, I wanna make the world a better place with my art. And I try to tell people like, look, you know, if you want to like the more people that buy your art, it is a signal that you are making the world a better place. Okay. Because it's resonating. It's working. If people aren't buying it, you're not making the world that much of a better place. Okay. How do you figure out how to do that? You get it out there. You know, you market, you see what resonates with people. You know, you do this type of romance marketing and you get closer and closer to what the world wants from you. You know, the world's trying to pull out of you. And when that happens, and when you're in it for that reason, you know, you're going to, you're going to make more sales. It's more of a natural thing than it is a push. Okay, Don, I'm going back to you. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Don. I just, uh, hang on. Just unmuted you. All right, we're back. Um, can you hear me, sir? Yes. Wow, what you've been saying about, you know, you talked about Andy Crawford before. I remember and it's you get Such a really, good guy. you yourself get excited and, and obviously he's doing that to you and thousands of people i mean the emotion that camilla talked about you know the bonding uh, the relationship your documentary the romance marketing all of that really i mean i just get that i i totally get that and i'm going to go as far with that as possible um so I have a question that's sort of not, it's in that, in that genre, but it's kind of, it's about the artist's style. And I, I know that you're not here to advise how to paint, but maybe you've, you, you must know something about this. Uh, and here's an example. I was looking at Laura Madden's website and everything on there is exactly one person. I mean, you can see that everything that was done was done obviously by Laura Madden uh, and other artists have established that I, I've been a commercial artist for 57 years and very successful, but when I moved into fine art three years ago, I mean, I can paint, I'm good, and people respond to my work and they, they, they feel emotion when I paint a, a girl dancing or something, whatever, or whatever, even a cabin in the mountains. But um, I haven't done painting long enough to hit that you know, like Andrew's got his deal with the swamps and uh, Laura's got her thing with the simple drawings. <sighs> I know you're not here to advise how to find that, but can you comment about that in terms of marketing? I need to get closer to that thing where everybody in the world knows, oh, Don did that. Uh, I, I don't know if that's the way that I would look at it. How would you look at it? I would look at it more just like, like what, what is the niche that you can go after, you know, with your, you know, with whatever you want to paint, like however, whatever style you're going to paint it in, that's going to like really resonate with them and make those people happy. You know, yeah. like I would, I would look at like, I would worry less about like whether your style is changing or, or any of that type of stuff and, and be more into like, like, because we, you know, the art consumer, we don't care what's your your style. We don't we don't even know what your style is. You right. you see it so intricately, but us yeah. non-artists, we don't even have a clue what you're talking about. 
Yeah, right? yeah. Okay, it's, it's just art. This is, no. this is, you know what I'm saying? This is Don's art. Like, oh, cool. These are pencil drawings. And, and then here's some like really thick, you know, acrylic paintings, right? Like whatever. It's all Don's art. You know, we don't, we don't see it that way. It's more like, it's just more about, you know, creating something that has an emotional connection with the audience that you're after. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then like, you can paint any style you want. And, and it's like, that's why, that's why art in like all sorts of styles of art will work for that audience, you know? Cause it's the audience that matters, not the style. So I think when, when you talk about constantly saying, let's get your stuff out there in the market, that's how I would begin to find out the, you know, where I'm resonating. Cause I don't know exactly where I resonate now. Like, I mean, I'm looking at a lot of art behind you. <laughs> yes. Okay. Is that for sale? Like, would you sell it or are you keep it? It's all for sale. You want to buy 61, uh, 60 paintings? I'll give you a deal. No, no I want you to, I want you to go with, to our validation playbook. Oh, okay. yes, I wrote that I'll, down. I, I copied it off the chat. I want you to go do that. And I want you to, I want you to follow that. And I want you to go and show all of that stuff and, and go live on Facebook and Instagram. Oh, You'll see what to do. Oh, okay. And, so that's how you do that. And send an email out and show all, like, take your best pieces out of all of that stuff, right? Because I see, I, it's hard to see somewhat, but some of them are somewhat similar, right? Take your best yeah, one out of each group. Yeah, they're, so they're end up with 10, yeah. you know, yeah. and be like, yeah. Guys, I'm starting an art business. I've been a painter my whole life, right? And I'm trying to figure out, you know, what what niche is, you know, like resonating the most and yeah, you know, yeah, which direction exactly. I should go. And so in order to do that, I'm gonna sell these pieces, okay? I normally would sell this for $500. I'm offering it today. There's only one of them for 249 or 200. Don't right. worry about it, give a great deal. Right. But like, do that and get it out there. Email it out if you can to all your friends and family, anybody you have go live on Facebook, go live on Instagram and see what happens. And if you want, come back and tell us. But this is what, 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 what should hopefully happen is you get some sales, okay? Some people wanna grab some of this stuff. You got good work back there. Somebody, you know, somebody should wanna grab some of that. And then, and, or you're going to get some feedback yeah, and that's, yeah, that's from great. which you will be able to take the next step. But that feedback is gonna be real world, real market feedback. Oh, that's right. exactly what I needed. That's the all you need. Thing. Everything else is a waste of time. Do that and then decide your next step 100% based on that information and nothing else. Oh, I love what you said. The, the validation thing. I've got that link now. It'll take me through the... I'm not even on Instagram, if you can believe. I'm, I'm 75 years old, so I'm still working on, you know, the, so the wheel in my birth. It, in should, my it should tell you exactly what to do. If it doesn't, just come back to the, the next workshop. Yeah, no worries. That is fabulous. I'm so glad you you showed me how to solve the problem I brought to you, which was who gives a rip about style. It's about what what the people find to be what moves them. Exactly. What what resonates because you can like you said you can have a pretty website and if no if, if you don't resonate with anybody, who cares? You're you're broke. So that that's great. I'm so glad you you um and then the last little thing about, you know, and in fact, you answered this also, I was going to ask you, what is the best way to do the, the test to find out is my work sellable? And that's that right there, the validation process. So okay. got it. that is fabulous. I'm so glad uh, you answered all that. And uh, that's all I have. Thank you, sir. Okay. You got it, Don. All right, Ricky Richardson. You're up, my friends. I just unmuted you. All right. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes, I can. Great. Thanks, Nick. I appreciate your time and all the information that you've already shared. Um, of course. I've looked, I, I've been looking into it and, and talking uh, with one of your associates. Uh, we did a demo uh, not yesterday, the day before yesterday, I believe. I got something and I, I want a clarity on it as far as signing up. I got an a email from Patrick um, yesterday morning about a special for six months. Mm. Uh, so six months free if you get started in the next couple of weeks, plus an early bird special. Um, I didn't see any stipulations other than uh, getting started in the next couple of weeks. However, the associate that I was speaking to that did our uh, demo, uh, me and my wife sat in on it together, he was explaining that it's required that you pay the uh, annual, the annual fee for the hosting for the year to get that six months. I just didn't see that in the, uh, 
in the email that Patrick sent at all. So I, I'm trying to be clear on that, whether that's the case or whether that was something that just happened and the person that I spoke with did was not aware of that at that point. I, I just, cause I'm trying to make a decision here. And yeah, no, that's, that's totally correct. It's the, the email is, it's the same thing. There's, it, it's, it's always been that way. Okay. So it just, it, because it didn't mention anything about, uh, you know, based on paying an annual, you know, the annual hosting yeah. fee, it didn't say anything about this. So I thought that that we, was, we realized that that was kind of vague. It's probably a mistake. It should have been more clear. It was just, it didn't say whether it was either, either or. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of, I don't know. They gave me a little pause because there's a lot out there and there's a lot of things sent in a certain way to, you know, kind of, pull you in, but oh yeah, there's the fine print, but there wasn't even an asterisk in there. So that kind of gave me pause for a minute. So that's why I wanted to ask and get clarity on that. So you, you got it. And that, that that's not the case, the way the email says, but you do have to pay the annual to get the Yeah. And like, and Ricky, don't worry. Like our, we're, our, our team, like we, we are only here to do the right thing. I, yeah. I, I'm not, that's not lip service. Like talk to our customers, you know, if you haven't already, like, we're, we're, this is supposed to be like, if you hear, you know, what I, what I've been saying today, right. It's like this, this process of building your own art business, you guys, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Like I want you at art storefronts for the next 20 years. Right. Like you don't start people off like on the wrong foot, right? like lying to them or misleading them. If you're hoping for a relationship of that nature, you know what I mean? But that's all we're in it for. Yeah, and I don't, and I, I hope you don't take that the wrong way. I, I'm not inferring that that's the case. I'm just saying because of the experiences we sometimes have and, ooh, just this and this and that, you know. I totally agree. And, and it's, a, it's a decent investment uh, looking into this, and um, I'm very serious about doing it. I just want to be clear about what I'm doing and exactly what the, the options are. So uh, we dealt with that. I appreciate that. I had a couple other quick questions. I know you, you've you been talking a lot and giving sure. a lot. Um, I think you mentioned something about when you were talking about the photographer, Andy Crawford. I'm a photographer as well. I do fine art uh, photography. And um, I was wondering, you said something about him doing videos of what he's doing. And that it was an idea that I had thought of and actually had started kind of practicing a little bit. But I am I, am I correct in saying that you don't have that on the website, but you put that video somewhere else. Those, those segments. Yeah, we've got, and, and Ricky, we've got this all mapped out for you when you uh, become a member, like, like perfectly step-by-step step of exactly what to do. Out to actually do videos and that type of stuff, because that was something that I had a thought of. Yeah. Yeah. There's all sorts of like, you know, there's all sorts of stuff like that. You're going to want to mix it up a bit. Um, but we've got the playbook exactly for that to like, tell you the types of you know, posts you should do and to give you different ideas and examples of other members, you know, like right there. So it's very easy to like, see exactly how you should do it the right way. Okay. Um, so yeah, there's all, all sorts of stuff like that. Okay. And do we need, do we need to set up a, I, I started setting up a Facebook business page, but I, I stopped because I couldn't decide what name I wanted to, to use. I, I have a, a separate, uh, business with photography that does portraits and things like that. But I wanted to separate my artwork completely with a different website so that people that are interested in art go to that and that's all they know uh, that I do perhaps. Do I need to get a Facebook business page and, a, and an Instagram business page? Because I keep getting notifications from Instagram to you know offers to set up a business uh, account with, uh, with them. So is that a good idea to set up it a is. account with both? It is, yes. Okay. And then it's just a matter of whatever my website name is going to be um, is the same one that I would want, obviously, uh, for branding and, and consistency. Yeah, so, like, like I always recommend to like, like, you know, um, as a as a preference, it should be like your name plus fine art, you know, or like Richardson fine art or Ricky Richardson fine art or yeah. If you have some like rather like because I think it's more personal and this is all about like the personal connection. And so having the name in there is, is really good. Yeah. I wasn't sure because my last name is so long, if that would be like a big, uh, big mouthful to say, Ricky, Ricky, a Richardson, fine art photography, or just fine art. Um, so that you don't think is, uh, an issue. I'd keep it as fine art. 
Mm, just Ricky, Ricky Richardson or Ricky A. Richardson Fine Art. Yeah, or I would maybe do Richardson Fine Art. Yeah, I think there actually there's one already out there that sells it's fine art, so I don't have that one. So I could do I had the I think I got the domain name for R A. I think I have R A Richardson Fine Art. Uh, I think that I have. Um, so That's good. Kind of shorten it a little bit, um, but uh, yeah, there's somebody that has Richardson Fine Art already. Got it. Got it. Yeah, but either, any of those sound pretty good. Okay, and uh, logo wise, we should have a logo. Uh, need yeah. to get somebody to do one. Um, I had one that I had created, but I'm I'm not so sure that's going to be a little too bright uh, for people that are really into fine art. It, I mean, I've I've gotten good comments back about it because it's uh, just two three colors, um, but it's brilliant color as opposed to what you typically see, which is kind of a soft. Um, soft type of lettering and that type of stuff. So. Yeah, because I, 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 exactly, I like the, uh, I tend to like, and this is a personal preference, but I, I tend to like, you know, the the black, the neutral logos, like the black signature. Right. You know what I mean? Because it's also like, you know, as soon as you start bringing up the colors, right? Colors yeah. start conflicting with the art, you know right. what I mean? And the minimalism of the design. Right. And so, you know, the more, the more minimalist, um, you know, the better. Yeah, I had it all figured out. And then I talked to, uh, actually talked to my brother that's in business too. And he, he loved the design, the design, but he said, well, when I look at it, I don't think fine art, you know, I think <laughs> something else. So I was like, okay, I gotta go back and forget the last couple of months I've been working on that and come up with something else. So, well, so, you know, here's a recommendation too. This may apply to other people who are in need of a logo. Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com. Yeah. I mean, and we've got a ton of people doing it, uh, the, the logo. So it's a matter of what style you're looking for. And that's right. Course. And so the way you want to go about it, though, is you go, you look at like the highest rated people, look at their examples. And when they and go through the examples, they should have like probably like 30 to 50 each. Yeah, you know? like just, right. They'll have like a little you just click the arrow and you can go through them. When you see one that looks pretty similar to what you want, then go with that person because they know what you want to do. And you can say, hey, I want one pretty similar to that. Can mm. you, you know, um, here's my name. Can you give me like three mock-ups, right? Right. So can that translate the, the I mean, that can translate that your name actually can translate into being your logo. Am I correct? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. I wasn't, I wasn't really thinking that way. I was thinking of something graphic that, you know, could be uh, catchy with the initials or something like that. But um, you, could, you could have that as an icon, you right. know? Um, you, 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 you could do it both ways. Like, yeah. I like that too. Yeah. I like that too. Like, you know, but, but keep it like neutral and, you know, classy, elegant. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks for the confirmation. You know, like if, if it was like, uh, R, 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 A, R, like you could have R, A, R with like a box around it. You know what I mean? Like I've got several designs similar to that. And yeah, like, you know what I mean? It should look elegant. Like, you know, you look at like jewelry logos, like, yeah. You know, recognition. So if I put that label on anything that's being sent out or custom pieces, I want something wrapping. I'm thinking, you know, Tiffany boxes or a certain color wrapping. So I'm thinking about all that stuff at the same time. So there's a full experience from purchasing it to uh, receiving it, especially the, the limited editions and things like that. Totally. Totally. I love it. Well, Nick, I really, really appreciate it, man. Thank you for all the information. Um, and uh, thanks for thanks for the time. You got it. Appreciate you too, Rick, Ricky. Um, good luck with all that. Okay, Camilla. Camilla's back again. I just unmuted you. I think you have to unmute yourself too. There you yeah, go. Yeah, I was working. Quick follow-up questions um, regarding what Ricky said, actually. Um, I don't think I understand fully the six months free. Are you saying that basically the 44 per month, if somebody prepays the annual, annual is like 528 or whatever it comes to. So if I pay half of it, I get six months free or like, what's the, what, how does that work? I honestly do not know the exact details <laughs> as the CEO of exactly what the, the, the details of the sale are. But if you request a demo, talk to them, they'll show it to you. They'll show it to okay. you. In fact, I know that you can like, if you buy 
a year up front or it, you know it depends on which plan you're on if you buy the bigger plan you can get like a year i think if you buy the lower plan you can get a, a six months for free don't quote me on it but talk to them because they have the, the whole thing on the screen okay and then question about logo you know i was actually surprised that you put so much attention to the logo because it's i mean like i understand the whole look and you know if you're a real business and whatever it makes sense, but how important is it at the beginning? Well, I mean, given that it'll cost you like, I mean, you can find somebody to do it on Fiverr for five dollars. Like, it's almost like, why not do it? Yeah, that's like yeah, Fiverr. But now, you there'll be people who charge ten dollars, twenty, a hundred, you know. But I heard of somebody who paid like five hundred for it, so that's why I was asking about. Yeah, it. no, no, no. The world has changed. The world has changed, right? There's amazing designers in other countries that $5 is a lot to them, you know, and they can, they can do it. They're talented. They can do it quickly. So yeah, that, that's why I would say like, it's worth it because you know, you're, 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 you're sending a message to everyone that comes to your site. Right. And in the art world, depending on how much you charge, like this is where people just blow my mind, right? They have like a terrible logo or they don't even have one or they made it themselves. And then they're charging like $5,000 in original. And it's like, to any, to any, and the only people that are going to buy a five thousand dollar original is a high net worth individual. And you think that we can't smell what's going on here? Like, you, it's a totally uncredible business. It's like, come on, like I love this piece, but like, look how bad your website is. Look at your logo. It's like, are you even? What are you running here? It's like, no, this thing. I, I, I should get it for seven hundred fifty dollars. You know? Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. But um, now tell me, the people that are doing consulting, because I, I clearly you've run multiple businesses. You're very experienced. I don't, I don't run multiple businesses. I only run this business. I well, own but, other businesses. I'm right? a shareholder of many other businesses and on the board, but I'm the CEO of this company. I'm not actively with any other company. What I'm saying is you've had experience running and starting companies, right? I thought oh, you yeah. started. Um, the people that are actually doing consulting, right? The person that is going to do demo with me and, and tell me about like, oh, this is good and bad about your website or your approach. What's their experience? Well, the, the people that are running the demos, they're not doing the consulting. It's our mark. It's our entire marketing staff. It's our leadership. Okay. So I'm there, you know, sometimes, you know, you'll, you'll get me in there like probably a couple times a month. Um, and my director of marketing, you know, is there, um, his marketing team is there. These are high level people, you know, that are and providing me advice with entre all of, like mostly all of them have entrepreneurship experience, some very extensive, um, and all of us together, like have created the entire program, you know? And so, um, so like the quality is very, very high across the board. You know, and everybody that's working with me, like they're trained by me as much as possible. And all you guys are too, you know, like all of our members, like it's a, it's a constant thing. Okay. And that, that makes sense. Thank you. Uh, one last um, question that I have, you know, you've talked about the experience and the value of art as being, you know, me and the piece, but the, it, the whole experience, I do understand the concept. I think for me, it's helpful to hear more about it. I don't know if you can say anything else about it and elaborate a little bit more. Like, for example, when you bought the piece that you bought specifically, right? How was that experience for you? I mean, what do you mean? What do you mean? Like, I, so from what, that artist, from that have, artist, I have four right here. I have four originals. One, two, three, four. Uh-huh. And, and like, I'm kind of obsessed. Like it's he, like, he wrote me in and I, you know, like all the, all the marketing, the marketing I told him to do got me, <laughs> which is so funny. Cause he's one of our members. He got me. And it's like, and, and like, I'm thinking about buying more. I can't, I can't not look at his content. I can't not attend his art shows. Like, because I'm very curious what the next stuff is that's going to come out because I might want to snatch it, you know? Um, but I'm very emotionally connected to it. I think about when I look at the piece, like the subject matter gets me, but, uh, but it's also like, there's a whole narrative around all of these pieces together. You know what I mean? Like when people come to my house, 
and they come into my office and they see this, it's like, there's clearly a theme here. Like, Nick, why do you have four originals from the same guy, the same artist? And it's like, I'm kind of excited to tell that story, you know? So, uh, and why, and like why I really like this guy. There's a lot that his whole brand I connect with, you know, like we share that connect and he doesn't know, he doesn't necessarily know that. I mean, he probably knows now because of the, like I bought enough from him, but, but like, that's what it was. And it's like, it's because he fits with me. Right. So that's the point of like getting out there doing the marketing and, you know, he didn't deliberately like, uh, target me, you know, mm -hmm. he just did his marketing and I saw it and it roped me in because I'm the right guy for him. Right. Okay. That's helpful. It's just hearing about it more. It's just, it's helpful. So thank you. It I is. Agree. It's all about the documentary, right? That's how you rope them in. Like, like when you're doing that stuff, the people who are interested in and find you interesting in what you're doing, you know, like they're going to naturally like attract to watching that stuff more and connecting with you. And then they're going to have a very deep connection with all of your pieces. And they're probably going to want one, even if they don't have the wall space. And so when, you know, the time comes, um, or maybe you have a deal or something like that, then that's when you're going to get them. Okay. And, and, and the, the guys that are doing consulting, let's say if I sign up, you guys can help, help me with that basically. Right. We help with every, every question that you have, any of these questions that you have, you just bring them to the workshops, you know, and we'll help you through it. Everything that I told you today, like 99% of what I've said, our marketing, like my team will be able to answer these questions. No question. Okay. Like they're all, everybody's capable there. They're experts. All we do is all we do every day is work with 4,000 individual members, right? Like you get a lot of expertise, you know, the stuff where I come into play is like from a high level entrepreneurship standpoint, like when I'm talking about the pillars and things like that, those are things that my director of marketing, Patrick, you know, and I, like, we really think deeply about these things after seeing really big patterns with like tons and tons of artists and photographers that we work with, you know, to bring that like as something that we can give to the industry, to you guys that are not customers to say, Hey guys, do these things right, please. You'll be way better off. And our mission as a company is to solve the starving artist problem. You know, how do you do that? Well, the way that I look at it is, you know, this is a thousand year old problem. There's like, out of every artist or photographer who has tried to like build a great business, it's like 0.001%, let's just say, has like built a great business, right? And well, so what do we need to do? We need to like increase that dramatically, right? I want to take that little like straw that, you know, people are fitting through to become successful and turn it into a pipeline. And so what we're trying to do at Art Storefronts is be an all-in-one solution you know, to make that happen, like, like way more often, you know, by giving you guys everything you need and making it affordable. Marketing is normally, you know, if you, if you guys have not looked into it, marketing consulting is normally like at least 150 or $200 uh, an hour to get anybody decent. And they're not even in the art industry. And then oftentimes they'll charge 15, 10 to 20% of your sales, like look into it, you know, like, and they'll do one project over a weekend and then you're done, right? There's like a famous saying, like you sneeze and a consultant charges you like a thousand dollars. So, um, you know, we're, we're trying to make this whole thing affordable by having everybody pitch in to the membership and then they get access to everything, right? Constantly updating software, website software. It's constantly getting more features and functionality, like faster than anything. It's, this is not like, I'm not just saying that, just look at the last five years, ask any of our customers. It's a, we're never stop, you know, um, adding more features and functionality as we learn what the visitors need uh, to, to like, or where they're getting confused in, in, in the art sale, right? It's, it's, it's all around making the customer experience better for that art buyer, because that's how you guys are gonna win, right? Same thing goes for the, for the consulting. We're constantly testing, experimenting, because the, in, in marketing, the goalposts always change, as we say, right? The marketing that works today will not work six months from now. It will be done, right? Say, that's why, like I mentioned SEO, search engine optimization earlier in the call or in this uh, conference. And uh, it stopped working 10 years ago. Like we were off that in 2011, you know? And people still today are like, hey, I, I want to do SEO. And it's like, that is the biggest waste of time that you could do. 
you need to be where the arbitrage is. Arbitrage is the advantage, where there's an advantage. That's where we want all of you. That's where we want all of our members, right? Where the arbitrage is right now that like not everybody in the world is doing because that's where you're going to get the highest return on your time. Um, and so, you know, that's going to be the most effective. Great, thank you. I, I've seen, you know, several calls that you and Patrick did and you're definitely very professional. So, um, and, and very experienced, I can definitely tell that. So thank you. Thank you, Camilla. Um, I appreciate that. And always do your research, right? Like look into my background, you know, Patrick's, our bios, they're on the site, all of that. Um, it's all there, like total transparency, total transparency. Um, ask any of our customers, you know, um, they'll tell it to you straight and I won't even tell you who to contact. We've got a ton of reviews on Facebook. They're all up there. Okay, um, KM, I got you now. Hi, Hi there. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? How are you is your name now? KM or is good, there? Good, good. That's just, that's, that's initials now, it's Kathy. Okay, hi Kathy. It, it was taking too long, too long to type in everything with uh, my thumb on my <laughs> phone. So it's just like KM, done. Good work, good work. Okay, so, <laughs> yeah, thank you. So um, I'm just gonna give you the, the background and then ask my marketing question. Um, I'm a, I'm a photographer, I'm an amateur photographer, but um, I, and I'm trying to figure out where my niche would be. I, I, I have a library of work. I do a lot of my um, photos when I travel, <laughs> when I was traveling, um, you know, like street photography. Um, so I don't really have like background stories, like the guy in the swamp going and actually, you know, setting up his tripod and doing the things or the artist that is do a live paint. I kind of already have this library and, and maybe I'll do, uh, I'd obviously do more when the time comes to travel again. So that's the kind of, I'm, I'm trying to figure out where my niche is and try to figure out the brands, but I'm kind of getting closer. So if I have a small following on Instagram, because a lot of your marketing that you've been talking about is organic content, um, organic content marketing, right? So you do your own, you post the story, Facebook, Instagram, it's none of it is really paid. So how do you grow your audience? Because my audience, like I, I have like 800 followers on Instagram. It's not even my, my uh, you know, my name. I just kind of put something up and it's all travel related. And, and it's, it's, it's decent. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah. But how do you grow that without actually and looking for the people that kind of like that style without actually doing any paid in order to get those, the target, those specific interests? Well, they're called like, marketing tactics and that's kind of the secret <laughs> sauce, isn't it? Yeah. Well, can you tell me a little bit more? Well, I, I, there's some things I can, I can't, I can tell you there's some things I can't tell you because those are advantages obviously for our members. And, and, uh, but what you talked about though, is like just doing social media posts is just romance marketing. That's all it is. Mm -hmm. Like you're just keeping, and, and of course, like you'll get some new subscribers and followers every time you do something or every other time you do something, right? But that's just keeping your audience warm. You need to acquire more leads and more followers. That's what you're asking, mm -hmm. right? And yes. one way is paid, but we are not advocating that, you know? So and, then what are you? Yeah, so you, you have to do other marketing tactics, right? Um, in order to gain more leads, like get more email addresses, right? You gotta get really creative on that. And uh, we have a playbook with what we call the number one marketing tactic um, for our members. That's what I can't share um, because it's private. And, uh, but that's what, that's essentially what you have to do. It's called lead acquisition, right? That's mm -hmm. what you're after. So you need to look for ways to acquire leads and remember that, you know, followers are not worth very much. You need to get them on your email list. That's key. Yeah. Right. So you go on Instagram saying, I'm having a flash sale. I'm doing, giving away a whole bunch of stuff. Here's a contest, sign up your email. That's how you start. And you keep doing contests. Try anything that you possibly can, you know, try anything that you can. So, but that's what you, you're, the, the point is, I can't tell you exactly what people pay for our members pay for to get. Mm -hmm. I can't give that to you. So you can ask it a thousand ways, but I can't give it to you. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but the part that I think is most important is, you're asking a very intelligent question. Yes. And um, the, the, what most people get sidetracked on is all the other stuff, right? The wrong stuff. 
the right question is how do I how do I acquire more leads? Okay, mm -hmm. so you are literally pinpointing the correct question because this is something that everybody needs to be doing all year long, all year long. It should be the number one focus: lead acquisition. I did a video on this. Like you guys could look at it on on our YouTube page or somewhere on our blog. Um, it's called the number one metric, I think. I think it's called the number one metric or something about that, um, where I did a rant about um, how, like the importance of this and some of some of the stuff I'm talking about. But it's worth seeing. Yeah. Okay, so you have strategies on all the lead acquisitions outside of actually paying the targeting on Facebook saying, I want to target people who like to travel, who are, blah, 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 you know, you got so it. outside of all that. Correct. Um, and that's because something that's every day because there's a finite ability of my 805 people on Instagram because I'm terrible at Instagram, yeah. period. I, I um, Well, we have tactics. We have tactics that will help you um, expand what you have, but that's only like, like, five percent one percent of what you need to do right because that'll help you but there's only so many times you can do that because yeah. like you're going to be exhausting your audience right you're going to be yeah and they'll unfollow me they'll be like eh, yeah yeah exactly right so you have to be you have to like you have to do that sparingly but what the, what we say is you need to be fishing in other ponds that's what you have to be doing right yet like you you have one fishing pole in the water and it's your current audience like mm -hmm. gonna, we want you to get about another 10 fishing poles in the water of people who don't even know about you so that we can get them over and into your following. Yeah. So that's other platforms though, right? Like that's like using, um, how do you, how do you gain leads from to, to your website? So you must use other platforms to, to place your content other than Facebook and Instagram. Well, it's not, it's not about posting content necessarily. Okay. It's, it's all sorts of different stuff, right? So yeah. Lead acquisition. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. I, know you're <laughs> I know. I was just like, I just want to peek underneath the hood. Yeah. I, well, I mean, I, if it was something that wasn't see like what's as, there, because I understand as, paid, I understand paid very well. I get lead it. Acquisition yeah. is a guarded thing for yeah. us. It's, it's, you know, I, our members who pay to get access to that information would be very upset with me if I shared this. Gotcha. Fair like, enough. So it's, I can't yeah, do it. I have, if you're a member, I'm going to, res we're going to respect that. Like you get yeah. an advantage, you get in it. I want, mm -hmm. I want every member to get an advantage. You pay a membership fee, you get access. It's that simple. Right. Um, and you get the advantages. Like that's, that's what we do as a business. So okay. I have to deliver so that I'll, promise. Awesome. So now I understand all your lead acquisitions are outside of paid media. Awesome. Yeah. And, and if you want, if you pay attention to us a little bit more, like, you, um, you'll hear Patrick and I, Patrick's our director of marketing. We're live like five days a week on Facebook. Yeah. He's, I've, I've been on one of them and he's funny. He's really funny. Yeah. He's funnier than you. So actually, you know, you know what you would like, you just reminded yeah. me art business mornings. Um, we did this, we did this a week ago. We did a session on when are you ready for Facebook ads? Go check that yeah. out. Actually, April, um, can we get that? Can we get a link to that in the chat? Um, for Kathy? Yeah. Awesome. It's a, like we go through the whole thing. And so you'll understand right. that we actually are, are advocating, like telling everybody, do not do Facebook ads. You are not ready for them yet. Don't spend the money on it. Okay. And we go through that in detail. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. And you've done that through learning. Okay. Uh, and then finally, um, uh, my last question is, um, I understand that there's romance marketing that needs to be done um, on occasion uh, just to keep everything warm and you have to have some sort of activity um, at least some most of, most of the week, right? In order to kind of keep everybody warm. Um, how do you do that as a photographer when you're actually not planning your shoots or, you know, like you have something that's on the website that that you kind of want to promote? Like, what, like how, how do you create that content? So... There's a couple of ways that you can go about it, but um, first of all, nobody knows that it's not necessarily new, but you should just revive mm. it. You know what I mean? You don't have to say it's new, like you don't have to lie, but you should go back and go through these things and take people through it like a documentary. You know what I mean? Oh, like standing up there and just saying, hey, this is the photo and this is the story behind it? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. okay, so it's talking head, okay. I did this at this time, like back at this day when I was here and I was doing this mm. and, you know, this is what happened, you know, whatever you can about it. 
And, you know, so I just added this, you know, I'm going to be talking about this series for the next two weeks. I'm going to be, you know what I mean? Releasing a new one each day or something like that. And like, yeah, there's all sorts of ways you can go about it. Okay. Thank you for the time. You got it. And good, and good tactics. Good try. Good try, Kathy. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> good to see you. All right. Don't, uh, did I miss anybody in the chat? I'm really sorry if I did, because there's been a lot of hands being raised. Um, oh, it looks like Ricky, he got to me. Um, I answered him. I think we're okay. Don, you got another one though. I see it. I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead, Don. Yes, sir. Um, so um, I wanted to add a little, not add as though I'm doing the program. You're, you're the man, of course, but I wanted to say something if, if you don't mind about logos, because I've been a logo logo creator for 40 Let's years. Let's talk logos. What? Let's talk logos. Yeah, I mean, I, I know that as well as you know your business, and I've been in it for over 45 years and very successful. I created one of the most famous logos on the planet that every one of you has seen every day on Main Street for the last 30 years. So, Which one? Well. Oh, you can't uh, tell us. Well, I, I'll, get, I'll give a little hint. Um, First of all, it's it's in the Mexican food area. It's as big as McDonald's, and it's uh, and it has uh, the logo uh, has a kind of a ring in it, if you can imagine. And it's okay. The, I've got it. Go got ahead. It. Okay, so I created that logo. Uh, anyway, so not I'm not. It's not about me, but just so you have some credibility. Uh, what I wanted to talk about is <clears throat> is going to Fiverr. I'm not against Fiverr. It's fabulous, but I wanted to caution people to to not have this idea that, oh my God, for five or six or 10 bucks, 25 bucks, I can come away with a logo. Yes, you will come away with a logo, but a lot of those people who were doing that work or God knows where they're in the Philippines or somewhere, which is fine. I love the Philippines, but they're, they're somewhere in the planet and, and they have a nice business, but they don't necessarily really get the logo world, what they will do, and I've, I've had some customers go there and be disappointed, some of my uh, associates, they, they, they often will, will because their, their investment in you is not very deep. I mean, 25 bucks is not. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, look, 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 this is a, I don't want to go down this road, Don, if you appreciate that. It's a distraction. No, it's fine. Yeah, I just want to say, that be careful when you're getting a logo. Just, just be careful and follow your heart. That's all I want to say. I don't want to criticize or, or, cross against go go against what you're saying just be careful for sure. and, and 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 make sure that it really rings in your heart and like you said a uh, very simple very elegant and possibly black and white i love what you said i'm not trying to come on to take away from anything you said just be careful and and check out the logo and ask yourself does this you know, maybe maybe that would be a place to test out what, like like you said, test out your paintings to see if there's any resonance. Do people like them? You might want to test out a logo before I, you put it everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I got you, Don. I don't want to go down. Th this is another. Th the reason I got to go. You're a, you're a professional logo person, so you're going to have a lot of, you know, emotion on this, and you've got a lot of experience. I this can this right here. The reason I have to stop this is because not because it's not the right information because it is, is because this will be something that will clog someone's drain, okay? Because there's a time and a place when you have a startup company, right? You do not, you, you get a logo that works, you don't have a lot of money, you get something that works and that resonates and you get to market, okay? Because no one is going to see it. Even when you have $10,000, you're like the tiniest business on the planet. Even when you have, a, I even look at art storefronts as multi-million dollar company, right? We're still a tiny business, tiny business, right? There's so many people who don't even know where, who we are yet. We could adjust our logo or something if we needed to, okay? And so there's a time and a place and Don is correct that. So what you might do is you start with something and then when you've proven the business out and you're getting further, then maybe you might update it you know, and it's not going to matter to anybody. You don't have a brand yet. Okay. Like a, what I mean is like a big company brand. And so like, so don't let it clog your drain, but I have also, I have the counterpoint to that. I have, you know, uh, started companies and have invested in other companies where they had great results with a $5 logo. But that's why I said, you got to look and see, 
that they've actually done a logo that you like that's on there before you just buy it from one of them, okay? And usually you're gonna get higher quality from somebody that's a little bit higher, but don't, don't stress about it. Get, have a logo, make sure it looks good, launch the business, right? Launch the business, that's the most important thing. So we both agree with each other, Don. <laughs> but yeah, I want you guys to launch. As you can see, like I'm an entrepreneur. I've, you know, I've, I've, uh, I've like made all of these mistakes where, you know, I, you know, spent uh, thousands of dollars on a logo up front, and then I realized that it wasn't the right, sending the right message for the business, and then I had to start it over like six months later you know, or, and then I'm waiting for the designer and the designer doesn't get back to me. And then I got to find a new one. In the meanwhile, I lost three months of time. I want you guys to understand that like, no, 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 don't, don't be waiting for that perfect moment. Like, you know, if, if, if you can afford to have a better logo and you've been around for a while, you should probably do that. You should really, you know what I mean? Like if I was a serious photographer and I'm like, okay, I'm now I'm going to like take my website seriously. And I know I'm doing this for the next five years, hundred percent because I'm in this, like I would invest more than $5 in my logo, like no question. You know what I mean? But if you're early on, I'm giving you the freedom to go, cool. I didn't know I could get a logo for $5. That's better than I could do on Photoshop right now, messing around. Cause that's what I see most people do. They try to go free. They create their own, which is just, it's just terrible. And it's obvious and you're, you're leveling up even with that, you know, extra thing, but you should take this approach with everything when you're getting live guys, like don't overthink and perfectionist everything, like get live and uh, we'll give you the best advice that we can to make you look as professional as possible for that launch. Okay. Um, I'm doing one more scan guys. This is a, we've been doing a long session, but boy, has this been fun. This has been, this has been a great one. This has really been a great one. Lots of detailed questions. Okay. Um, looks like we covered that. We covered that. Um, we got a few more names interested in a demo. April, if you can make sure we get it uh, in the chat. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a few. We'll get those over to the outreach team. If anybody else wants a demo, please request a demo. Fill in the form in the chat. Uh, there's a link in there, just scroll up and, uh, and then, you know, let us know, put, put your name in there. I want a demo and we'll make sure that somebody gets, you know, gets back to you as soon as possible. They get back to you anyways, but since we have the sale ending, you know, where you can save this uh, uh, before the end of August, just want to make sure all of you, you know, get in the queue and somebody gets back to you. Okay. It looks like we've got everything covered. Um, We'll leave it there. Thank you guys. It was good chatting with you all and seeing you and we'll see you next time.